What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Golden Fox Podcast. And for um, for this uh, podcast, we're joined by Lightning Bliss. Hello. Oh, that's me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next is Riley Percival Miller. <laughs> Hello, people. And last but not least is, of course, Wolfhead Brony. <laughs> Hello there, ye. You chat, me, me, meme, you know how I do. Hello, chat. Hello. <laughs> so, um, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing, I'm doing good. Doing I'm good? still alive! Yep, still alive and ready to... How did I, uh, how did, um, how did Solo <laughs> say it? Um, <laughs> pardon me if you I say this. so no, much it... traction going into that, and then you just backed off away from it <laughs> because you forgot what to say. <laughs> no, I was trying to remember what Solar said in one of the Let's Plays. Um, he jumped in the calls like, I'm here to fuck Alicorns and eat ass. <laughs> What's the difference? Get out. <laughs> get out immediately. Get out. Banned from every... Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out. IP ban this man. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. Dishonor on your cow. Why don't you invite him again? <laughs> you monster. Because I'm so lovable. So I, I kind of want to. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to share something a little funny. But before I do, like, does anybody have something exciting that's been happening lately? Um. <laughs> Well, while he's going, hmm, 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 hmm. Oh, yeah, Joey, I see in the chat. That oh, is that a Joey is a you see in the chat. Yeah, that is oh, a Joey. Oh, it's Pizza Pone. Yep. Um, I am almost finished with my special Halloween video. I will be releasing it Halloween morning. Yeah. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. That'll be fun. Oh, yeah, I'll bet that's fun. Like, th th it's always a good day whenever Bliss has a special coming out. I still remember last year when uh, Twink was taken on that big bread monster thing. <laughs> Zombie bread monster. <laughs> <laughs> I love how that turned out. It's just classic monster versus monster story. Or I feel like there's no way I can bring this thing back. Back, but I want to have a monster again one day, and I'm because this time around I want actually the the Belch brothers to team up to take on a monster in my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I could just like the damsel just, in distress. Oh yeah, no, I could just imagine like me and Solar like taking on this big giant like living soda bottle or something. <laughs> Oh my god, that could be like a magic lesson or something where I, I try to make a, a soda can bigger for you guys to open and it turns into a freaking monster. Oh, this is this is uh, just like this is a story right in itself. Like me and Solar would have a belching contest chucking Blam, like you'll uh, have to excuse that beeping noise in the background. No, like I could just yeah, imagine yeah. me and Solar just having a chugging like soda contest and we're trying to get the bigger belch. <laughs> Um, hey, Cougar, you know how many burps you're just, gonna have to uh, record if that goes down like that? Like a <laughs> lot of burps. So you're gonna have to record a lot, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, I'm all for it. I'm pretty sure Solar's all for it. Uh, Riley, mm -hmm. you were saying? I was just gonna say to Cougar, um, don't please don't call somebody without their permission on Skype. That's not okay. Oh, oh yeah. Don't yeah, do no, I, I don't like, do that. Yeah, no, I don't like it if there's somebody who I don't know about and they go to add me like, OK, like I keep myself a little bit flexible to whoever wants to add me on Discord or Skype or what have you, because, you know, there's just some people want to get to know me just a little bit. And, you know, that's fine. Uh, what I don't like is when I'm being randomly called without any warning or anything else, you know, unless it's somebody mm -hmm. who I know closely. And even then, I'm like told like in private, like, hey, are you open for a call or something? It's like, eh, OK, sure. And then we'll the talk. only time like the only time I won't do that, to be perfectly honest with Golden, is if it's an emergency. Y yeah, mm. that's pretty much the only time you would have to just like call someone immediately. Oh, but can I address uh, Heating Cougar? Uh, Heating Cougar, I'm going to be blunt with you. The answer is absolutely not. I do not openly advertise my Skype uh, info. I do not openly advertise my Discord info. Oh, yeah. The only places you can publicly talk with me, there's my Facebook page that is on my YouTube channel. There's a link on my YouTube cha channel to my Facebook page. I have a DeviantArt profile. I have a Twitter profile. And if you happen to see me on Twitch, uh, you can chat with me in the chat box on the right. But... I do not advertise my 
Discord or Steam for a reason. Because oh, yeah. I, I'm an introvert and oh. I like my privacy. Yeah, no, like I personally, I think this is a cautionary tale to anybody who's like big on YouTube or big on anything. And even as a business standpoint, you know, you're expanding your business and you're doing something online never ever expose your your online communication stuff if if you if you if you want to be flexible to have somebody add you somewhere um they like if if they're like okay here's some advice to anybody else who would want to get to know you know certain big names out there um yeah private message them and ask them hey do you mind if i add you on skype do you mind if i add you on discord i am this person i want to get to know you just a little bit you know it this that's really just common sense Mm -hmm. I can go into a whole podcast. I've done this before. In fact, Golden, you were on that podcast with uh, 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 for no good reason channel. It was about like safety on the internet. So, yeah, yeah, no, we, that that's we did an entire <laughs> podcast about online safety. Guys. Yeah, so, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll. As a matter of fact, uh, as this goes up on YouTube, I'm going to have a link in the description where me, Bliss, and a few others talk about this stuff. The biggest yeah, thing is me, you, Aeon, and Evan Yeah, sorry. and just just, just oh, the yeah, final yeah. note on that before we start getting into the topics. Never, ever, ever, even if there's somebody who you look up to, never reveal your personal information. Don't ever give out your personal home address. Don't ever give him your phone number that's just mm -hmm. that's a recipe for disaster waiting yeah. to happen that because that should yeah that should that's that's common knowledge don't ever do that yeah uh, you were saying cougar cougar doesn't seem to be getting it so i just te texted it to him dude it's not about whether or not we trust you or not or the fact that we just like our privacy that's just part of it the other reason is that you should you 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 my good sir you should never give your personal account information to random strangers on the internet because you don't know them. Yeah. I mean, hmm. really this. Would you go up to some random person you never met before on the street just because you think they look cool or look popular and you say, hey, you want my cell phone number? Can I have your cell phone number? Can we be friends? Would you do that? That other person would probably be creeped out. No, I would definitely not. No, 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 guys, let me finish. Okay. You would not do that. Absolutely not. You would never do that in public. I know you wouldn't. So why are you doing it on the internet? Just don't. It's the same thing. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, just th this is a cautionary tale. You know, don't. This is just a huge, huge word of advice. Don't don't reveal your personal information, even to people who you like. You know, it's not even a matter of trust. It's just a matter of common sense. Just you have to be very cautious with who you interact with because you never know what they may be, whether they're popular or not. And I can definitely speak for, you know, for others like myself who are involved in, you know, the shitstorm that happened the other time. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but you can kind of see where I'm getting at with this. Yeah, but anyway, I think mm -hmm. we're all yeah, we're on a we letter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let, let's let's get excited for some uh, some Halloween related material. Who is who's ready? Oh, who's excited yeah. for Has Been Hotel? All right, so Bliss, in order for this to work, we go from top to bottom on the roster, and who takes turns? I volunteer going last, so um, I'm going to go ahead and let you go first. Oh, so what are my thoughts on it? What yeah. are your thoughts on it? I mean, there's been a lot of, like, uh, what are they, trailers and teasers and samples? Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much so far. Yeah. Who's, who, I, I keep I keep screwing up her name, the artist's name. Uh, her name is... Uh, Vivzy Pop. Vivzy Pop, Pop, yeah. Vivzy Pop. Okay, ever since I've seen Vivzy Pop's work, of, um, it was that animation of... Die Young. <sighs> Diane, yes, that was my favorite thing she did. Oh, it was the first thing I saw that she did, and then I watched some more of her work. I love this person's style. She, I can clearly see some Disney inspiration took hold, but it's clearly her own style, and now she's coming out with her own series, and I'm just hoping and praying this will end up on Netflix because it's just that good. I've been watching her develop this Um this entire series. I've uh, been listening to some of their podcasts. They're hilarious. <laughs> oh, I didn't know they had a podcast. Yeah, oh. they do. They do a podcast while either. she does drawings and doodles for people uh, in exchange for donations, rewards, and support about the show. Okay, that is a clever idea of a podcast slash like speed draw or just draw and work in progress sort of idea. Yeah, she mm. even had some of the. Uh, voice actors on the podcast with her so the the voice actors who who like spidey the voice actor for spidey's on there and the voice actor for um oh what's the the 
the radio demon. <laughs> oh, Alistair. Alistair. <laughs> oh, God. I remember that clip. Isn't that um, Dante Bosco, I think his name is? There's there's even a there's even a small like silly animation. I think it was made by a fan, but it was ripped <laughs> off one of their podcasts. And it was uh Alistair basically trying to get Spidey to leave him alone. It's like, uh, okay, Spidey, uh Alistair loves you. Um here, just take this buddy and go far away from me. And he's like, Oh cool, free buddy, thanks, bye. <laughs> 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 I loved it. I just absolutely love it. And I could this is clearly, I mean, for if there's any Miners in this chat room. I need to quickly point out that the Hasbro Hotel is an adult cartoon. This is not for minors. Oh yeah, no. This <laughs> this yeah. This was created by. Sorry for interruption. Yeah, um, go ahead. Okay, so for those who don't, yeah, obviously you know Bliss. You know to to follow up what Bliss is saying, she has been working with you know not just this series, but prior to that, she's worked on a couple of other animation projects. One of which was actually a big thing a few years ago. It was uh, it was basically her own uh, animated version of Die Young by... What's the name of the artist who did that song? Kesha. I think it was Kesha, Kesha. Yeah. yeah. Let's make the most like we're gonna die young. I can't say it right, but whoa, yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> like we're gonna die young. Yeah, That's I, the remix with Becky. Yeah, anyway. anybody who watches us on YouTube, I'll have a link in the description for that one. It is absolutely mm -hmm. stunning to look at. And this was all done through pretty much Flash animation with a group of uh, various animators. And an interesting piece of trivia with that is that it actually was taken down originally by a music company because it was a you know, big claim from something. But Kesha yeah. actually gave support to this project because of how impressed she was, so it came back. Now, this would be a push forward for Vivzy Pop to put together, you know, one animation project after another until this would become a huge thing, the has -been Hotel, which has been talked about for the past, like, two or three years now? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry yeah. for the interruption. <laughs> uh, Bliss, you got more to say? Uh, I do have one more thing to say because I just love the series so much just from the shorts they have given out. Like, I think they give it out four or five shorts mm -hmm. of the series. One of my favorite shorts, because I like to replace the characters with my characters, like from our community <laughs> every uh, now and then. Oh, uh, um, fire away. Okay, so here's this one short where, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Edge Lord, uh, I guess that that was his bad nickname. Edge Lord, that snake demon is trying to take over a section of hell with his. Oh robot. yeah, and uh, in the end, that another girl, um, I think it was a cherry, bo cherry yeah, bomb. cherry bomb. Her name's Cherry Bob. She breaks. She she literally just breaks into his robot. It says, "You looking for a fight, old man? Why don't you get your ticker talk bullshit off my turf before I smash it?" <laughs> oh, you want to go, Missy? Well, I'm happy to oblige. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, okay, Cherry Bob is Bliss. Edge Lord is Silver Quill. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, okay, so anything else? Uh, I think I've been rambling on long enough, so I'll just let y'all go. All right, Riley, you're up. Um, pretty much, I have, that's pretty much all of, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? You've pretty much covered most of the bases when it comes to has -Been Hotel. Vivzy Pop, I've been a fan of her style for the longest time. Not only does she have, like, great character design, but her backgrounds are so pleasing and interesting to look at. She just has a great overall style altogether. And so I'm really looking to see how much she can take that to the extreme. And not to mention the amount of uh, animators working on this project, including like uh, Daria Cohen, who did like the um, the uh, the Voltaire music videos and stuff like that. Like, you remember the, the Fuck You song one? <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you, baby. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's always, that's always a classic song to use for anybody what? who you take an issue with. And they have, yes. like, a lot of, like, talented, both well-known and, like, online voice actors, including, I think, Dante Bosco is the voice of Alistair. So it, they they have, like, a talented cast working on this, and I, I really hope to see this, like, become a really, like, integrated into society thing. Like, and I, I hope this, like, gets picked up m more mainstream as well. So I'm... Uh, I, I'm just really looking forward to seeing how this pans out and how these characters are and just... Mm. that's pretty much all I have to say. <laughs> well, I mean, 
uh, the thing that's worth talking about when it comes to the trailer is the amount of different shorts. Like, we can even just go over the details of whichever, like, shorts you like the most. Like, there's the Radio Demon, and there's, um, I forgot what his name is, or if it's a Alistair. sheet. I don't know if it's... Oh, uh, uh, Pixie, or no, Angel Dust, Angel Dust. Well, okay, uh, like, to give the details, apparently, um, I don't know if it's a... D- Okay, well, imagine that limousine where he or she was saying, "Ugh, I didn't want to lose my credibility." Yeah, I that... just call her. I call her Spidey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now no. I know who you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, like for instance, like I love that scene where, um, like she, uh, like she goes to get something from a vending machine, and some other guy comes in to try to take it, and then it gets crushed, and he's like, "Oh no, my drugs!" <laughs> It's like she cares more. Okay, he, he or she, I, I can't tell the gender on that person, but uh, they, they get, I've I think that's heard the point. He and he's like a gay pen, uh, hooker or something like that. Well, so either yeah. either or, the person cares more about the drugs than you know the thief who got crushed. And you know when you think about it, uh, okay. So apparently, people are saying that Angel Dust is a guy. All right. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna say he at this point. So yeah, uh, as a gay hooker, he he cares more about the drugs than the thief who took it. And what do you think about it? The, the thief kind of deserved it. <laughs> yeah, but this is hell. So I'm not even surprised. It's like, oh my god! My drugs! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, That's sorry. like me and my cookies. <laughs> okay, so my apologies again for overtaking, you know, the podcast. Uh, Riley, you got anything else to add? No, that's pretty much just the gist of it. I, I'm really excited to see what comes of this. Okay. So, Wolfhead, you're up. Okay. Uh, I ran into Has Been Hotel just browsing Twitter. Somebody retweeted, like, a clip of it, and immediately I got hooked. I was like, I want to know what this is and where can I watch it. And immediately people told me it's not out yet, but it is being made. So I was like, I'm going to watch this shit like a fucking hawk. <laughs> and <laughs> it's it's really good so far. Like, even with the little clips and stuff that they showed us, even with the final trailer, even with, like, the music, and they're just showing scene after scene oh, after scene. I forgot scene. the music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got something to talk about now. Yeah, talk about the music. Do it. Uh, oh, are, yeah. you, are you talking about the musical that, um... I... Shit. Sorry. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, here I go, taking someone's thunder again. Go let, ahead, Wolf. Let, let Wolf have, let Wolf Yeah, have. my apologies. Go ahead. Yeah, the music in, in Has Been Hotel overall, and the music especially in the final trailer, is just really good. If, I see Riley has been uh, linking uh, trailers in the chat. Can you link them the final trailer if you haven't already? And just listen uh, to the music. That was the it's first. Really good. Uh, that was the first trailer I linked. You know, <laughs> okay, okay, we okay. if it does make you feel uh, any better, Riley, I'll just have like all the links to the Hasbun Hotel stuff like in the description on YouTube. Oh, yeah, I know. This is more for like the people in the chat if they don't know what Hasbun Hotel is and stuff. All right, fair well, enough. They know. They can just literally type in Hasbun Hotel and they'll find all the trailers and shorts. There you go. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> that reminds me of people whenever people like this is going off a of has been hotel, but this reminds me of people whenever they ask a question and I'm just like, dude, Google it. Like that's what Google is for. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you asking us? There's a, a, a treasure trove of information called the internet. Ask them, like for real. But, it's kind um, of like, okay, I am literally gonna Google has been hotel. What's the first thing that pops up? has been hotel videos <laughs> yes. wow it's like this it's like a thing called research <laughs> I, was type I don't know why you had to put on those kind of airs for that voice but okay the first thing i see research. when i type in golden fox is work boots <laughs> what <laughs> no what <laughs> oh yeah no i kid you not whenever i search my name up whether it's google or youtube yeah there's actually a brand called golden fox which is a brand for boots and I think there's also like another user who uses the name, and his is like furry related material. There's there's more than one person who has the name oh Golden Fox. Oh my god, it does. Okay, I, I just know. typed in Lightning Bliss. <laughs> what happened to you? This is my channel. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Okay, sorry. <laughs> anyway, that's just funny. <laughs> but, anyways, <laughs> we'll <have to> continue. <laughs> I will say this last thing about Has Been Hotel. Before I stop talking about Has Been Hotel, I hope we're not doing that thing where we're so hyped for something that we expect it to be phenomenal and it's just okay and everyone gets disappointed. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I know what you're talking about. Okay, I will say this much. 
Actually, you know what? I'm going to put a pin on that and let you finish first. <laughs> yeah, because there's been a lot of situations like even in like today's media climate where every show has to be phenomenal to get your attention. It's like no show is just OK, because then everybody's just going to be like, it sucks. They'll see something that's okay and then be like, no, this show sucks. And I'd be like, all right, it's, it's just okay. I don't think it sucks. I think it's fine, you know? So what has been Hotel, I, I, hope, I hope that they could bring what they're promising to us. It's just what I'm saying. That's all I have to say. I, based off, I mean, yeah, I hear what you're saying. And based off what I've been seeing and showing and the effort that's been put in just to the shorts alone, Mm -hmm. They're clearly shorts from episodes, so yeah. I like to think we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Mm, okay, okay, okay. You know, but I am super excited for Has Been Hotel. I really, really am. Oh, one more thing. Uh -huh. You know, at the uh, the end of uh, every little demon inside every little demon, there's a rainbow. How inside there's that of one guy. Every demon, there's a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> that one guy says, "Wow, that was shit." Oh, I was gonna talk <laughs> about that. But that yeah, was no, apparently that, Maxwell you know what, Adams. Oh, go the creator of Bill and Mandy. It's your turn anyway. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, so, uh, Wolfhead, you got anything else? Nope. It is now your turn. Take the floor. All right. So, um, I just want to take the <laughs> pin off of uh, what Wolfhead said about you know when it comes to you know people having high expectations and everything. When it comes to hype, just expect to have fun with what you're watching. Don't think, oh, it's going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread, because that mentality it's so much more common nowadays that I, I'm kicking myself in the teeth for this because I had high expectations for a lot of episodes of Friendship Is Magic, and we'll get to that in the next topic. But until then. That's part of the reason why I was not enjoying season four the first time. I was being so critical over everything and not really thinking down to earth that it's just a show. Stop making it such a big deal. And this is a habit that I've seen everywhere else. I'm looking at you, Star Wars fans. <clears throat> I am not going to take that back. You need no, you like not, expect not, you really need to set your expectations. Like don't set it too low, but just 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 think to yourself, just have a fun time with what you're watching. You know, if you're bored with it, you're bored with it. If you're enjoying it, you're enjoying it. If there are issues with certain characters that make you feel uncomfortable, you know, that's different compared to like expecting nothing but the best. Best story, best characters, best music, best everything. No. Get that out of your fucking brain because it's not gonna be like that. Hey, yeah. hey, Golden. Yes. They killed Luke Skywalker. I'm freaking done with the series with the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> rah, rah. It that was makes a me angry. One. <laughs> <laughs> they but... killed Luke. I'm done. <laughs> Come on, even Mark. Even Mark. Uh, I, 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 I get. Okay, I, I get the whole hatred about that. Personally, if they were gonna kill off Luke, it would have been much preferred that they would do it at the last Star Wars movie, not. The second to last. I think that's, you know, I think that's something that is a little out of the ordinary. Uh, but yeah. anyways, but we're not here to talk. We're not here to talk about Star Wars. Um, uh, much like everybody else, I'm very excited for Has Been Hotel. What I kind of expect out of this is just mostly, you know, the focus on the humor. But again, and I'm going to refer back to this. If it doesn't go what I expect, then oh, freaking well. If it's fun, it's fun. That's all that matters. Um... As far as I'm concerned with how this, uh, this series would go about, if it comes out to like a weekly discussion or if it's a bi-weekly um, bi -weekly airing of, you know, whatever these episodes are around, I don't know how long it's going to go on for, but mm. this is something I'm going to definitely keep around and, you know, if they name the episodes, this will be a good use for any future podcast. So this is definitely something to anticipate too. Um, but while we're on the subject of those little shorts and samples, I actually want to add on that I love what the Radio Demon said when he walked inside, saying, wow, I haven't been this excited since the marketing crash of 1929. 1929! So, <laughs> so many orphans! <laughs> uh, better, better, I know your game, and I'm not going to let you hurt anyone here, you pompous... Your back shit lord dear um, if i wanted to hurt anybody here i would have done I so already <laughs> <laughs> no i'm here because i want to help <laughs> uh yeah no it, it it comes it comes when it's unexpected and i really like 
I look. I, I hope to see more of that. You know, with you know the type of humor that has been Hotel has. Um, but whatever the case, this is definitely something I'll be you know looking forward to. I don't know if it's going to be on Vivzy Pop's channel or if it's going to be on a separate channel. You know, whatever the case is, uh, you know, we'll we'll know about it when it comes out. And I just want to add that considering that this is up on Monday, there's a good chance that it may be out already. So this is just really us on what you know our feelings are and what we're anticipating to. And again, you know, in the future, this will be something that might be, you know, future podcast material. So, uh, with that being said, is there anything else that we would like to add on? Well, you were saying, like I was saying earlier with the uh, every little demon, there's a rainbow. Oh, yeah. The guy who, the guy <laughs> yeah. who says that shit is apparently, and I'm, I don't have anything to back this up. That was apparently Maxwell Adams, the creator of Billy and Mandy. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be oh, so yeah, cool if that was the case. I can't remember where I heard it, but I, I heard it somewhere that, that the guy who said that, that they actually got him to voice that character for that one line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you were going to have Maxwell Adams, you would have said, made him say, wow, that's shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to add. <laughs> all right. Bliss, you were going to say something. Oh, uh... Because I, I heard you saying something I, while Riley was talking. Oh, go ahead. Um, There was this thing I noticed about the characters being demons and whatnot. And the demons are based on how they acted in their past life. So when they were human, like with Alistair, apparently he was a radio host. Who did a lot of diabolical things. I can't remember what exactly. I think he was a murderer for or something. Not sure. Implied. Probably a gangster. Or implied, or okay, Al just said implied genocide. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> well, I mean that fits. It very, very much fits. <laughs> yeah, that so, doesn't so sound surprising at all. Go ahead. So, so it's interesting to see that there are so many different types of demon-looking creatures, and they they all represent something solely based on the soul's past life when they were human and it represents the sin they committed as well as their personality and <laughs> it's kind of creepy as hell <laughs> <laughs> oh hello <laughs> yeah i just i played myself <laughs> I also want to add on uh, j12k i have not watched that many episodes of billy and mandy so i would not know what you're talking about I have, and I still don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I doubt Blissey can hit Rainbow. I doubt um, Blissey can hit Rainbow. Okay. Let's. At this point, we're kind of reaching it dead end here. So. <laughs> let's let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. Something much much lighter. So, as many of you know, a few weeks ago, My Little Pony Friendship Is Magic finally came to an end, and upon doing so. <laughs> Um, it's definitely more than appropriate to talk about the series finale. And as usual, we go from top to bottom. Um, Bliss, what are your thoughts on the series finale? I loved it. Honestly. Mm. The the final two parts where there's the big epic battle. Okay. I, rem I remember this all going around and before, and before I get into it, I just want to point out to all those people who were just awful to uh jim miller the creator tim Big miller man. jim miller sorry that's him <laughs> tim miller jim's brother jim, <laughs> jim miller the actors the writers all of them for getting harassment about the show ending the way it did and yeah. whatnot uh, that's not cool that's not that, cool. that's not cool guys come on please don't do that don't it, it, it kind of scares me because if people are doing that to the top big creators that, you know, are actually, okay, that are in a studio industry, mm. what's stopping that from happening to us who are just, you know, YouTube content creators, you know what I mean? Don't do that stuff, guys. You either like the show or you don't. Move on. Do not harass the creators. The yeah. fact that they go to the trouble of bringing you something in the first place is something you should be grateful for. Yeah. Jerks. Anyway, so that being said, uh, I remember there was a lot of hate about Discord uh, being Grogar all along. Um, I didn't see that coming. Thank you. That was unexpected. It was, I, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, it was very unexpected. I am a G1 brony, and I was glad to see this happen because <laughs> I don't really care for Rogar. I just don't. Mm. I really don't. To find out that Discord set all this up, set up all these trials and and to to basically prepare Twilight to become the ruler of Equestria. Thank you, Aeon. <laughs> <laughs> he has made his contribution to this conversation. <laughs> huh, say it again. Or love Aeon. Heart love Aeon. Okay. Uh, Hail Hayton. Hail Satan. <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah i liked that setup because twilight legitimately had a reason to doubt what if all of your achievements and accomplishments were all based on somebody setting it up for them and if you were to fail that somebody would probably have a backup plan to fix everything for you that's bad that's super bad i don't feel i i can totally relate to her panicking and having doubts about her abilities now as a leader no i thought that was a good thing to resolve were the fight scenes as big as twilight versus Tyrek the first time no nah, maybe not oh we lost riley uh-oh riley where'd you go oh no He's disappeared oh, no. into he's disappeared into the ether. Oh no! Well, hopefully he'll come back. <laughs> he's probably got um, internet problems. Oh wait, he's in stream yeah. party. Oh, there we go. There he is. <laughs> oh, get him back. <laughs> we apologize for the unfortunate circumstances here. Sorry. But, it's okay. <laughs> but um, no, I I like the reasons behind that and leaving leading up to everybody coming together to stop the three villains. Um. But let me get to the epilogue here. Um, it, it, I admit, it is weird seeing Twilight as like Celestia Twilight. She I long. Kinda, <laughs> she I, long. I kind of <laughs> wish she had her own design as a. Okay, they want to make her a little bit taller. Okay, that's fine. Did they had to make her look exactly like Celestia? Yeah. Uh, that's probably my only gripe and complaint. I wish they could have made her, her own body design instead of copy paste celestia assets yeah. whatnot but other than that just okay that's just more of a nitpick of anything i still loved the message because i cried i rewatched the season finale five times and in each time i cried yeah. and here was at the specific point when i did when Twilight and her friends were crying when she confronted them saying i'm moving away and i'm never gonna see you guys again for a while and y'all don't even care I'm like, yikes! That's me. That's me at every convention. Oh God, no! I, I kid you not. Las Vegas High Roller Pony Con. I cried my eyes out. I did not want to go yeah. home. I had so much fun with you guys at High Roller, Aww. and I didn't want to go home. That was like the best birthday I ever had with my friends. Aww. Really emotional. <laughs> You remember the cake they got at the uh, Japanese place? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Dusty Cat got me and Fiora a cake shaped like a... <laughs> shaped like, uh, like a penis. A Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, oh, Dusty. <laughs> I just, I just want to add that I felt the same way when it came to the end of my trip to BabsCon. When um, I had to drop uh, Chrissy off or Keyframe off at Sweetie Bloom's house before I had to drive oh, yeah. back home, it was very emotional for all of us because meeting her for the first time and meeting everybody else for the first time, I had a similar feeling with uh, Pacific Ponycon in 2016. Uh, I didn't get teary-eyed, but, you know, it's going back home and getting back to reality. So I definitely know where you're coming from on that regard. But what really hits home for me is the idea that friendships could drift apart with time. That is extremely possible. I speak from experience. I did have a few friends in high school, but unfortunately I was a senior and a lot of them were freshmen for some reason. So when I graduated, oh, I lost contact with them. Mm. Um my first brony friends, believe it or not, it wasn't Golden Fox or Dog or Silverquill. No, oh, no, no. It was... No, I had another group of brony friends in the beginning. Um, 
okay, the story is a little bit more is a is actually a lot more dramatic than how I'm going to tell it right now. But we ended up drifting apart. Apparently, um, friendships in the end. Twilight said it best: friendships take work. They do. It's and and admittedly, it's hard because a lot of us live in different states, even different countries. Yep. Mad yeah. Munchkin lives in Scotland. Luna Corva lives in Australia. With Joey and Golden live in California. I'm in Texas. Doc is in Utah. Superquill is in Colorado. Um, Eliora is in Indiana. Indiana. And voice, <laughs> ba, ba, voice, ba, is like, ba, ba, <laughs> voice is like in New York. Finn is in New is in uh, where's he's where's in New York too. Oh, he's in New York too. Okay. Uh, Riley. Riley's a. Are you in New Hampshire? Yeah. Yeah, I guess right. <laughs> Me, the most boring state but, on earth. <laughs> it's it's hard, and 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 it's scary. It, it this is a fear of mine. I do have a fear of losing my friends, or being separated from people I care about, or being scared that they will stop caring about me, or they'll stop talking to me. I have this fear. It it's a terrible anxiety. I I've expressed it many times to my friends that I'm scared y'all are not gonna like me one day. No, or stop talking to me. It's a legitimate fear. How can this be fixed? How can we prevent this from happening? Work at it. Yeah. It's Talk called, yeah. to yeah. them. Yeah, it's called Make staying in touch. Rage. It's called staying in touch. It's called t- talking. It's called making a meeting, make, make it a group chat to plan a meeting to meet up one day, like once a year or so. Like, we're actually doing. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's not just kibitzits. We actually try to hang out on a normal basis. We'll pick a location, a time, a date, a week, and we'll just hang out together. Whether that be a trip to Disneyland or a trip to the beach, a cruise, <laughs> or just hang out at a hotel and go check out the town. You know, that's what we're trying to do. Friendships take work, and you have to commit to them. Even if we don't see each other all the time, it doesn't mean we're not friends anymore. Mm. I, I, I quite literally am lucky to see Golden once a year. That bumps me out. Yeah. I want that yeah. fixed. <laughs> Hopefully that but will change one day because, because, you know, I have a much better possibility now of looking for work. I'm just going to end it there so that way you can continue. Okay. Um... We're still good friends, though, aren't we? Oh, yeah. I've only seen you once this year, and that was at BrodyCon. We're still good friends. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. (laughs) I I rest my case. (laughs) Yeah. You have the floor. I step off my stool. (laughs) Oh, oh, okay. So the alicorn gets to, like, take over the podcast. Hey, hey, we're going in order. It's fine. It's fine. I'm also only here, so... (laughs) (laughs) The alicorn is actually so tiny that she needs to stand on a stool. So the, when Golden walks over, he just moves the stool and stands regularly. No, it's not a stool. That's a freaking soapbox. <laughs> I was thinking booster seat. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, I kid. Don't kill no, me. No, no, no. You, you deserve what's coming to you in a second. No. no. <laughs> give, me a yeah, give me a minute. I'll be right with you. It's going to be twink, isn't it? Oh no. Uh, while she's, you know, pulling that out, Riley, go ahead and give us your thoughts on the series finale. Um, well, the whole like Discord twist was uh certainly something. I I I honestly didn't really feel that bad about it. I mean, Grogar was kind of a boring character from what I saw. Nothing really like hey, struck me. By <laughs> what the Sorry, hell? Y'all. Sorry. <laughs> Advertising. <laughs> <laughs> We all just got claimed by whatever commercial. It that was. was like some people were like going out of their way uh, to say, "Oh, oh, oh no!" Oh boy, what am I listening to right now? <laughs> I, I think I know what it is. Is that Godzilla? It's Godzilla. It's Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, it's Twink Riley. You better run for your life. <laughs> the girliest scream that can ever be conjured. Wow, I feel like I'm being competed for that. <laughs> I forgot. Golden is really good at girly screams. 
fucking Jaws, anybody? <laughs> Put me in a real situation, I'll scream so loud, I'll break my own eardrums. You'll shatter everyone's eardrums. I don't like doing that, but that's how I scream. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, carry on. Um, the Grogar spell. thing was interesting to say the least. I, I didn't really have a problem with it. Discord, I saw what his intentions were a mile away concerning how the season started. I'm like, oh, that's probably what he's going for. Uh, yep, I, that was right. The one of the things that bugged me about the whole thing is, did what was with Tyrik? And so like suddenly he doesn't have the ability to like absorb magic all it, all he wants, and he's like. He's like using the bell to absorb magic. I'm like, D did I miss something? Did he like lose the ability to absorb all this magic or something? T Rex, you know, I mean. I thought that too, but then I noticed there was something different about it. When he got, when when they first got released magic from the bell, it was directly from the bell. The mm -hmm. bell must have some sort of. I don't know, con contingencies on it or something, because he's not absorbing the magic himself. The bell is giving it to him. So mm -hmm. I think that's different from him actually absorbing it than receiving. Whereas he did, re he did absorb uh, magic from the pillars and other creatures <laughs> that got his way. But like, yeah. it kind of like with Cozy Glow, she didn't, she obviously can't absorb magic. They gave Discord her powers via through the bell. <laughs> it probably tells me that Tira can never can no longer absorb Discord's magic because the bell is transported to him directly, which means if he, I guess if he receives it directly rather than absorbing it, he can't control it directly. So he basically has to absorb it. Instead of like raw power, it's just he has like these abilities naturally and stuff, right? I he think so. Okay, that makes sense in a way. Um, that's speaking... a theory, though. I'm not yeah. telling I'm right. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's kind of what, what we basically have to go off of. I, I didn't see anything with Big Jim about that on Twitter. But speaking of which, um, can I just say I kind of wish Cozy Glow had stayed in that form because I loved it. Because oh, it was this big yeah, freaking yeah, chaotic yeah. monster and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to add on to that right now. That design looked like something you would see out of a freak show random pick you'd have from the OC Pony creator. <laughs> That's kind of why I loved it, honestly. <laughs> well, you're you're Riley. You're a sadistic person. You know that? I mean that. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. When I first saw that, I was like... Big lived alligator moments. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the three part finale. I mean, the two part, I should say, because the other part was an epilogue, basically. I loved how they had at the end all these ponies and other creatures coming together and basically an end game moment. Like, some people were yeah. like a little disappointed that there wasn't like a really big battle. But at the same time, I think it fit more the theme of the show with the finale. Yeah. Mm hmm. And, um, like, um, I I'm just going to say this right here. Pinky Gang Chaos Magic is the scariest thing ever. And that I was actually. Yeah, I, that I, was something I, I, I loved seeing. <laughs> I can make yes. the entire world filled with ICs. <laughs> I'm like, uh, that, that puts uh, Thanos to shame as far as. Uh, <laughs> oof, oof. Yeah, uh, no, no, she should not have that power. <laughs> uh, dude, Thanos is like, I am inevitable. And then, like, a giant cupcake just falls on him. <laughs> He's going to finish the sentence. <laughs> Suck it. But, Suck it, Thanos. And it was kind of like, at the ending, it was so satisfying seeing Discar Discord work together with the princesses to seal the trio in, in, in like, stone. I'm like, huh. That's that's kind of come full circle for him because he was like turned to stone by them, and now he's helping them turn somebody else into stone. I'm like, <laughs> huh, that's kind of satisfying in a way, honestly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and but but uh, when it comes to the two parter, I, I loved it, but the epilogue. Oh God, the feels. Yeah. Oh, I, I I I'm just gonna say this: the ending song, I cried like a baby. I, I was yeah. like bawling my my eyes out in that last song. Yeah, and, and I, water I is wet and the sky is blue and the grass is green. So, yeah, yeah that's no, nothing just, new. So if you it's cried, just, it's understandable. Go ahead. It, it's just also um, Apple Dash confirmed, and I'm like, huh. I, I didn't <laughs> think they would do that, but kind of came out of nowhere, didn't it? It, it came out of nowhere. That 
people are arguing that that that's that's something for you to assume, but it's not. Oh come on! Mentioned. They were arguing but, like an old married couple over chores. I know, and I'm looking at the image Golden has up right now too, and notice I'm noticing that Rainbow Dash has her hoof on Applejack's head. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, hmm. I mean, I guess it's possible. I mean, they they married um, Bon Bon and uh, Lyra, so yeah, yeah. They did. I, I, that is in the background. I, I guess that happens. Yeah, it was just so unexpected, honestly. As far as like pairings within the main six, that was probably the least uh, expected, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it felt like it came out of nowhere. To be honest, where I am on the issue, or not on the issue, but on this pairing, is like I I still don't know if it's actually canon. I think Big Jim did a great job of leaving it ambiguous. He 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 said on Twitter that he purposefully left things ambiguous for the fans to like interpret and stuff. Yeah, he Which, did a great job of that because I seriously I like don't that. know. But I, I think you can really infer that they're a couple, considering the conversation they were having, like a like I, a married couple. And like, you know, I can kind of I can kind of see why that is because if they actually did confirm it, there would have been a lot of controversy risen from like also, other people. Yeah, I don't. I don't, it. I don't care what anybody says. Flutter cord, flutter cord is canon. Flutter cord is canon, man. Yeah, even though the, yeah. like, even though Angel said in uh, Fluttershy's body, "I want to marry Discord." It's like, yep, there you go. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> And, and they gotcha. they presented it like a throwaway joke, but everyone that was listening to that episode was like, "Wait, wait, pause it, pause it." Yeah. What did she say? What did she just say? Like we all got super I know serious. What she said. <laughs> oh, and Pinky being a mom and marrying Cheese Sandwich, I'm just like, mm. oh. Oh, that, that's that was satisfying. That was so satisfying. Oh, that is satisfying. Like uh, out of everyone becoming a mom, I could see Pinky becoming a mom. Honestly. Oh she yeah, like yeah. I mean, like obviously she had some experience in taking care of a uh, pumpkin and pound cake. You know, Chrissy. Oh, yeah. Chrissy actually did say this, and I'm glad that she said this. Pinky <laughs> fucked Weird Al. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got Weird that Al's uh, Instagram post about it. <laughs> Weird Al got, got all up in that. All right. <laughs> Pinky, got, Pinky got to have, you know, the, you know, the Weird Al sausage. Also, Weird Al had a slice of cake. That oh, day. yeah. He loved, he was, he I loved No, he had a slice of pie. Weird Al. <laughs> yeah. No matter what. I'm terrible. He, he, he's just amazing. And I, I kind of like the uh, older designs for the characters. I think Rainbow Dash probably fits her the most because, yeah, I could see that. She she kind of has a mohawk thing going on, some of her ver versions of herself. And, and Pinky with the even floofier hair. I'm, I'm sure Kichi's probably going to sue her for copyright. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rarity with the gray streak. That's so fitting for her. Oh, and, yeah. And, and honestly, like the buff spike... <laughs> doesn't bother me because all throughout the series he like pictured himself as this buff dragon like we saw like inside his imagination and stuff the dude so, had so the it... craziest growth spurt oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> i mean how long did he stay a baby dragon like how old is he supposed to be in dragon years i i, I mean we sure, were joking you know about what this. i find you know what i find ironic about that sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. yeah he in the first few seasons, he did visualize himself as a big, strong dragon yep. protecting his favorite pony, Marietta Crush on. And then yep. as the seasons went by, he grew more and more and more humble, down to earth, focused on helping people more than his fantasi fantasizing or being greedy or stuff like that. His outlooks express his inlooks. Yeah, he's so yeah. honorable and loyal, and that is expressed in how he looks in the present or in the future. But I, I love think, it. but I think one of my favorite designs overall for the main six older is probably Fluttershy with her hair back because she's no longer like hiding behind her hair and stuff. It's just that really, is yeah. a really good. That point. is so like it is. Yeah, I didn't yeah. realize that until now. Yeah, like it's no longer like drooping over her face so she can hide behind it. She's become a lot more outgoing. She's not as shy. She's she's developed so much as a character. Mm -hmm. And she used to be my fa my least favorite of the main six and she's one of my favorites uh honestly now. She she's just come full circle and I, I love that. And uh yeah, the bag thing like everybody's like saying, "Oh, there's too the bags are too much." I'm like, "Well, <sighs> people age differently. I think that 
honestly, it shows that they're probably going to be in pony years. They're probably in their forties or fifties right now. I'm yeah, guessing. that's what people have been yeah. like speculating that they're in their late forties, and like you know what, that kind of yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I guess that it's it's sped up like twenty five or thirty years or something like that. Yeah, that that sounds about right. It's just, I I just. It's really cathartic, and I think it ended on a really great note. And everybody yeah. saw the book ending coming because oh, everybody. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. From dude, the very when that start, book closed. Oh my god, oh my god, dude. It's. It's it the was, feels are real. <laughs> out of, oh yeah. Honestly, with a, a year full of like disappointing endings for certain series, I think this went out the way it should have. It uh, did. Uh, it did. It, it went out exactly the way I expected it should, and it's very cathartic. And I, I'm probably just gonna go on a ramble, so I'm gonna pass it off to Wolfhead before I just like take. Yeah, the Wolfhead, call. fire away, man. Well, it's, what the hell hasn't been said? Um, <laughs> let's see here. Well, I guess I could talk about the Discord reveal. I like most people, you know, pretty much like all of them except for the show's creators i didn't see it coming and for the smallest time i was kind of mad because i was like discord you fucking idiot but then i realized <laughs> that D discord means well he's just kind of dumb you know he's just he's he's cunning but he's also kind of dumb i saw another episode where um uh, uh big mac and sugar bell were getting married and throughout that whole episode he's just causing havoc the entire time because mm -hmm. he, he can't really pick up when he's being no he's doing it on purpose he just wants people to like not notice so discord discord setting up this whole charade is great because it means like from the very start it, it made me look at the first episode in this season a different way where discord knows and he's tricking all the villains where he's like where um What's that other villain's name? He's so forgettable, I forgot his name already. What is he known Sombra. for? Sombra. Oh, Sombra. Oh, yeah. Sombra. Yeah. <laughs> so, remember that scene where Sombra's trying to shoot at Discord and Discord is just snapping his fingers and turning his beams into, like, cheese fondue and shit like that? Oh, yeah. So yeah. This, yeah, so Discord was in control the entire time. The, yeah. the whole time, throughout the whole season, he had this plan in the back of, the, back of his head, and that's great for me, but the way... The way he kind of went about it is is super dangerous because, like, what if they would have failed? And I know the argument is, like, it's a kid's show. They're not going to fail, right? But the more <laughs> I, I see Discord's plan, that's kind of like, well, what if you had a, a friend that had arachnophobia? And you're like, all right, well, to get over their phobia, I'm going to fill their room with Black Widow spiders. I'm going to be like, no, Discord, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> It's either like either he just doesn't go in the room anymore or he's going to, you know, have to go to the hospital. Yeah, That's, exactly. I think the problem is, is that Discord knows he's powerful and he thinks he's always one step ahead of everybody else. He's that cocky. But he, he yeah, his, his motivations were in the right place. He just didn't consider consider the option yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> consider the option that you might not foresee this consider the fact that you may not actually have full control consider the fact that you may not be as wise and as and a few steps ahead as you think you are he, regardless of the fact that his mind was in the good was in a good place that his motivations were pure he gambled way too much yeah. and risked hundreds of thousands of lives on a on a belief that he was in control of the situation and that he that Twilight would be able to do this no problem because he was in control. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And that was a lesson he needed to learn, I think. Um you are not in control. He should have learned this a long time ago, but like Rainbow Dash said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> Yeah. Another thing about Discord is that I really appreciate the scene where all the characters are like, Discord, what have you done? Because oh, we yeah. Rarely, we, I think I talked to Golden about this where I really like that scene because in some situations where Discord is being Discord, he never gets re reprimanded for it. Like, remember in, um, what's the name of that episode? Principles something? 
Oh, matter of principle. Oh, God. Matter of principles. Oh, my God. He's just being a dick the entire that time. That whole episode was just driving Discord's character backwards. Yeah. It yeah. just like it just felt like all the development he had for the past couple of seasons were completely thrown in the garbage. I mean, yeah. I think it fits his character, honestly. It fits his character, but it's kind of annoying when, like, at the end of the episode, the character goes, Oh, I'm sorry, Discord, we weren't thinking about your feelings. I'm like, what the fuck? What are you talking Screw about? Screw that! Yes, that's what. That's where I was coming from the entire time. So when Discord does something messed up, and you have every character, almost every character in the show, every main character going, Discord, you fucked up, this is not right. Discord, you fucked up, this is not right. Discord, you fucked up, this is not right. It, 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 it's good. It's great, actually. He got but, a, like every character got, just got tired of his shit. Like, oh, finally, yeah. Like, know? he well, got he got only, a very good railing right there. Yeah. No, not only did he get a good railing, he didn't get a railing from his friends friends and Fluttershy especially he got one from Celestia yeah. you made a <laughs> grave error in judgment oh disorder. she was did oh, you yeah. sense the coldness in oh. her voice when she oh, said absolutely. that oh god I'm cold <laughs> like that okay compare that to when like in like many seasons ago in a Cantalot wedding after Twilight got busted for trying to uh, reveal Cadence and being you know so evil and everything when everybody mm -hmm. walked away after Shining you know gave Twilight a good you know a good smack on the wrist. Even yeah. Celestia was walking away saying, you have a lot to think about. I'm like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's like, like me. Every... That's like if I were to hear Doc say that to me, I would be crying up a storm if I messed up that badly. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, no. No, but that wasn't... Her, her voice wasn't just cold to Discord. She was angry. Oh, oh, she yeah. was very yeah, pissed. Like, she has every right done. to be. Pure rage. She was Pure done. Rage. That's like, I am dropping the hammer, boy. The only reason why I'm not is because I'm no, I'm about to re relinquish my, way, my reign as ruler. <laughs> I'm like... Mm. I think right mm -hmm. in that instance, like, the Celestia and Discord ship just sunk. It just floated to the bottom. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's like turning not even like a rock, like a boulder. Yeah, like, no, it, no, it's, it's not stopping. Oh, absolutely. It's you know, I could just like metaphorically speaking, it's Celestia telling Discord, Discord, give me your shipping keys. You lost them forever. <laughs> <laughs> the ship is no longer sailing on this one, boy. And I guess I'll talk about one more thing before we move on to the next topic. Uh, some of the characters emulate other characters in the epilogue like pinky kind of emulates mrs cake where she's now a mom and and applejack emulates granny smith where she has like the ascot now and she runs the farm and mm -hmm. and rainbow dash emulates spitfire so on and so forth mm -hmm. you know i kind of like that i i like that a lot and that's all I wanted to say. We can, we can move on now. Oh, yeah. No, it's finally my turn to get my thoughts on the, the series finale. And, yeah, I know. We're kind of dragging this one off for a little too long. Um, it's a good topic. Yeah, it is yeah. a good topic. You know, um, I will say from experience that before watching the finale, I had to keep myself away from watching as many spoilers as possible. Uh, like, okay, it's one thing, like, it, it was just very, like, I was devastated when I found out that Jim Miller was given the death threats because, you know, the aforementioned yeah. that Bliss pointed out. Not That's cool. unacceptable behavior. What I was yeah. upset about, and this was something I had to go through for the past couple of months, is that the se series finale got leaked out in other countries, particularly Australia and the Netherlands. And I was so pissed because now yeah. I had to avoid as many spoilers as possible. And of course, as usual, people were uploading everything. So already I saw Twilight as, you know, the princess. And I'm like, God damn it, don't show this stuff. Yeah, it's the series finale. Come on, people. I mean, I saw that too, but I kind of saw it coming anyway. So that big spoiler for me. Even then, like, you just don't do that. You know, people are waiting yeah, for a finale yeah. of an, like, years worth of a show. And the fact that other networks aired this early in other countries, I thought it was very disrespectful. 
So I tried yeah, to, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, as is, yeah. like, ever since, like, season six, there have been episodes aired early and are, are leaking in, all, like, other countries. And some people say because the network started airing them in an earlier time. Like, why? And some people say because profits and such. Sometimes you need to put aside the importance of profits and actually go with what is important for the entire, like, the entire world and not just your own country. And the fact that the series finale got leaked early was one of the, like, that was one of the most difficult things I had to process. Um, but as annoyed as I was in trying to avoid all the spoilers, I still stick with the claim that it's unacceptable. Under no circumstance should anybody give death threats to somebody over a TV show. No. Yeah. No, not cool. You shouldn't do that over anything. Like, as much as I didn't like the Lion King remake, I'm not going to go sending death threats to Jon Favreau and Beyonce, who was terrible voice in Nala. Yeah, I, can vo I can vouch for Golden right here, right now. He's probably one of the biggest Lion King fans I've ever met. And not yeah. once have I ever heard him say to me in his rants about the Lion Guard that he was going to go and make death threats to the creators. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, Golden like, I was... Respect than that. Yeah, no, I was like, I was very angry when I saw the pilot of the Lion Guard. Like, I finally gave the show a chance and I got better, but even then, I did not send any of that crap to the creators behind the Lion Guard, nor did I send anything to whoever the voice actor was for Bunga. It's it, no, you don't send death threats over anything. <laughs> nope. It's media, it's something to entertain you. That's what it's there for. If you're not happy with it, you're not happy with it. But don't, don't go watch it. <laughs> yeah, and it's just on top of that, if you're sending death threats over a media, a movie, or a TV show, there is something wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. fact that I, I have to put the fa the fact that I had to point that out is already sad enough. This should be common knowledge. I remember years ago when I heard about the death threats of uh, Pinky. Uh, uh, Amy Keaton Rogers over Pinkie Pie and Philly Vanilli. Like, as pissed as I was when I heard about that, I was devastated. Wait, mm. what? Yeah, yeah you, okay, yeah. yeah. No, there was, was a huge weird. controversy of how Pinkie was written in Philly Vanilli. And I was pissed about it, too. I went on a big rant about it uh, when I reviewed the episode. But when I found out that Amy was given death threats, I almost threw up out of fear. I was terrified. And I had to make oh. a quick video about it saying, "This Guys, you shouldn't be doing that. What's wrong with you? You even admitted to me at one point you were worried about you were too hard on the episode and you were ranting and being ugly about it. I'm like, no. You, no, you felt guilty because of all the stuff going on with the voice actor, but you were talking about the episode. You weren't saying the voice I, actor or the writers were bad. You were ranting about how she was... You felt like she was misinterpreted in the episode. I, 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 it, it's more so the fact that I didn't like that... I, I felt like I may have inadvertently encouraged people to do that. And I saw that... Um, Amy was defending the episode over, you know, how the character was written. But, like, mm -hmm. I was willing to, like, make arguments over that, which it was going a bit too far. But when I heard about the death threats, I thought, you know, maybe that's the reason why she's defending herself. Because these death threats are just, that that's going to make anyone uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no, just, I, I've seen this before. Like, as, as utterly nasty and crucial as I was during season four, no, don't send death threats. And if this is, like, a common thing in a lot of fan bases, that just really, really saddens me. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go on too much of a tirade here, but back to the series finale. I love the series finale. Um, I thought the twist where Discord was Grogar the whole time, I was very angry about that the first time I saw it. And I was with everybody else when Discord got a good trashing. The issue that I had is that it undermined all of the anticipation of what I thought Grogar was being set up for. I mean, up until that point, mm -hmm. everybody else said that Grogar was boring or that there wasn't much of him. I thought he was written as a mystery until he fully reveals what his true power was. But the fact that it was Discord, I just felt like I got slapped in the face and got fooled. Mm -hmm. But... Mm -hmm. I grew to grow and attach myself to that and appreciated the rest of the episode as the fight between Starlight and Chrysalis was fun to watch. I love that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah like... That was epic. Oh, yeah, and I also love that she was making those silly, like, buddy cop um, puns. <laughs> like, you're gonna it, pay it for that. It was season six. Yeah, yeah was, no, 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 it was like, all put it on my tab. Oh, uh, beautiful. Oh, yeah, 
Real motivating. <laughs> also, I love that when she tricked uh, Chrysalis getting snowed down, she just turns away and it's got this pose. I'm like, that was one of the, yeah, that was one of the best small moments from those whole three episodes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I was just like, hmm. I was like, hmm, Thespio, do you still hate Starlight now? <laughs> hey, Golden, you I didn't think actually you were... ask him that, did you? You were saying, Riley? I think you're forgetting one other part. What? Um, Gee, Blaine, what are we going to do tonight? Oh, yeah, the pinky and the brain reference. <laughs> I, I got to say, I I, I kind of cringed during that joke. I didn't cringe <laughs> at all. I thought that was hilarious. Like, they made it so obvious. I'm just like, wow, writers, you really want to make a reference so that way the fans will do all the fan art. This is just like, this is coming to, you know, the moment where... Um, well, I think they had a missed opportunity by not having Maurice LaMarche voice the character. Who said that? <laughs> eh. Well, I can see that, but I also I also want to add that I love that the stu uh, not student six young six were actually put to a good use, and each of them made speeches mm -hmm. through every race. I was like, oh yes, school like the episode the two parter school days in the school of friendship was paying off so well because of that. Yona's speech yes. was my favorite. <laughs> Yona, best yak. I will always say that. <laughs> Probably the Can only good yak. Yona best yak in chat, please. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, but much like everybody else, when everybody was grouped together, you know, protecting the main six and forming the shield, like including, um, you know, uh, uh, what's her name from the movie? I forgot. I... Uh, Fizzlebop Barry Twist. Uh, I Tempest? call her Tempest. Tempest Shadow, that's who it was. Um, <laughs> like, I can already understand that they couldn't get Emily Blunt to say anything because she's too damn expensive. Yeah. yeah. But the fact that she was there was enough for me to be satisfied. I'm like, oh, yes. And, of course, I, like, if anybody were to make a joke, you know, video about, um, you know, everybody showing up, they would immediately play that Avengers theme. Da, 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 <laughs> da, da, da. Surprised right, H.G. Reese best didn't do that in his Bernie's react, honestly. <laughs> I didn't Wait. see that yet. I might react I to that. Wait, that oh, happened? Don't set. No, 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 like. Don't spoil it. No, 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 no. no. Hold on, no, hold on. Ever... No, no, no. I didn't know like AC Racebus actually made that, or is like, is it out? Yes, his, it's out. Uh, the react is, it is out. out. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, I'll I definitely take react. a look. I'll definitely take a look at that after the podcast. So yeah, um, I love those moments, and <sighs> I'm trying to remember what other moments were there. Um, the I, when it came to the last problem, I mm. was like, I didn't get teary eyed. I didn't, you know ball my ass out or anything like that but i felt so genuine and just had a smile on my face when it came to the last song and seeing a recap like you see all the main six go through their own individual colors and unveiling all of the characters they interacted with and yeah. you didn't cry like i didn't like no okay, okay part of that reason is because while i was watching it um kichi and uh keyframe were talking in the background and i'm trying to concentrate watching it <laughs> <laughs> the plight of having roommates <laughs> <laughs> but i i was still invested and i still liked where they went like i saw that you know spike over there as buffy as dwayne johnson now <laughs> <laughs> you might as well I call him up and put them down <laughs> you might as well call it dwayne spike johnson <laughs> instead of the rock god yeah you hey you had your chance when it was your turn boy <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> but no um the thing that okay when i was watching it the first time i thought it was pretty cool but it wasn't used when um i was able to get the episode like uh purchase the episode itself is that the transition at the start of the episode had a little intermission car uh, card that said many moons later and then it shows a lot of time gone by they didn't show that when i got the episode it just played off like a regular episode and i was yeah. so disappointed like dude keep that in there because this is the epilogue of like nine years of the show airing mm-hmm yeah but yeah, um, that's that's one downside I had with that episode. The rest of which I love the fact, you know, what Bliss was pointing out that Twilight was gonna now live in Canterlot and run, you know, all of Equestria, and that everybody else is so swept up that they're forgetting the fact that they're gonna be away for a while. And 
I, I just love the fact that they were able to stay in contact with each other over the years, indicating that despite how long you're friends with them and despite the circumstances they're dealing with, it still, you know, takes some dedication to get, you know, involved with the rest of the who you're friends with and keep it in contact for the next couple of years. Because this also happened to me. Like, there's some childhood friends I had all the way up until high school, and we haven't been in contact all that often. Although, I should check my Facebook and see if I can still get in contact with them. But, point still stands! Um, <laughs> I didn't mind the design of Twilight, you know, having, you know, that, that Celestia-esque body shape. Like, I thought that was just, like, the condition of the crown itself. Uh, there's been yeah. a lot of questioning. Like, Dr. Wolf talked about this, about whether or not Twilight will outlive her friends. Um, the way I see it, uh, some people said that... Or some of the creators said that alicorns have just have a longer lifespan than what the main six would have. If that is the case, then there's a possibility that unless she retires with the rest of the characters, you know, based off of who she is, you know, teaching the next student to. I forgot her name. Um, but Sun something. Yeah. Was, um, what was it? Fuck, sun Sun Shimmy. Some shimmy. Uh... <laughs> It was another like I think name it was going sunset off of like lust. sunset think... sunset no luster luster don luster don luster don okay all right so a lot of people are like yeah you know like starlight glimmer twilight sparkle <laughs> luster don shut Dawn. up shut <laughs> <up>. I will <laughs> fucking mute you here. Riley I will hey. mute you if you don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think I'm just I won't. pointing out the similarities in the name. <laughs> but either way, I think that, like obviously that like that would be she would become the next ruler based off of you know how Twilight was raised by Celestia. The way I see it is one of a few things: either the friends are still alive, and after everything she's learned, she's ready to be passed the torch, and Twilight can retire with the rest of her friends, or if. Maybe she will outlive them, but she won't live forever, or she won't have this immortality, you know, sort of rate to it. I mean, there hasn't been Celestia or Luna in the future time uh, line, so that should indicate something there. I think I saw on Twitter that Big Jim actually said that Twilight wouldn't outlive her friends. That's what uh, I yeah, saw Big too. Jim said that, but I don't believe it. I don't either. Well, what they're, well, even then, like Amy Keaton Rogers said at one point after season three, because people were questioning that, because you know, based on the fact that Celestia was around for over a thousand years, yeah. um, that yeah. like people were asking, <laughs> and Amy said, "No, Twilight will not outlive her friends." I just think that Twilight just has this temporary placement until it's passed on to somebody, uh, something else, like who becomes the next president or who becomes the next king of a nation. So in that situation, yeah. I think that when she passes the torch, she'll retire with the rest of her friends who are still around. But I don't know. Uh, I think that's just open for speculation. I also want to point out that I actually got this, like, this vibe, like this genuine, like, nice feel, but sort of not bittersweet, but something that is somewhere down the line that with the characters aging, you know, the little bags under their eyes that it's it's a really scary thought when it comes to, you know, anybody who you know of and they've aged over time. You know, I'm always having that fear of getting old. Um, yeah. But seeing that happen, it's... I think that was a nice send-off that, you know, they, they're still around despite, you know, what their changes are. And I think this was a good send-off for the fact that, you know, they've been friends for a while. And if the show continued while they're still friends, while, uh, you know, Celestia... Twilight is, you know, in Celestia's position. Um, the show would have gone on for too long. And this is just a short little epilogue saying, yeah, even in the after years, they're still, you know, they're friends with each other. And much apart with everybody else, I love the fact that uh, the the last shot comes to, you know, the book closing. And I'm sitting there yep. thinking, yeah, that is yep. too finite of an end. They had to include that in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Ended right where it began. It's basically a long, good, emotional explanation saying, and they all lived happily ever after. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as, as cheesy as that sounds, I think that is a very good send-off. And so I can understand why people got teary-eyed and they were crying and everything. Like, it's a very emotional send-off that I thought was a very, very fitting end to... A series yep. that I will give credit for this. 
that while there are some things that I felt could have been tackled on in the show, the fact that the writers and the animators and everybody, you know, put together a fitting ending like this and continue with the rest of the series, you know, in their own way shows that they still put a lot of effort into it. There's always, o- yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry. There's always going to be open for improvement. So I think we've pretty much covered about basically everything here. I don't think we're missing anything else. Well, uh, the only thing I'd like to say is that Celestia and Luna were useless once again. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, no. I'm going to have to. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm going to hold you right there, there motherfucker. No. <laughs> After Starlight broke out of that cell and freed everybody else, Celestia and Luna gave their freedom to help with the rest, along with Discord. Discord yeah, was but literally they were basically doing it off screen, screen again. They they didn't get to show off their powers like usual. They, they didn't, didn't have, have their powers. powers. What the fuck I are you know. talking about? Not even okay, no, dude. Okay, Not even what? Discord had powers. I'm this just was like, throwing rocks. That's what I'm just is. saying. <laughs> that was that was the was charged. Hey, I'm just saying, out of all the things, I wish they could have actually shown Celestia and Looney use their powers against the villains, like we've been wanting to see for nine seasons. <laughs> okay, at this point, I didn't care that Celestia, Luna, and uh, Discord were not using their powers. This was about Ooh. what Twilight and the main characters had to do, because that would have a much bigger effect and become a bigger payoff for all of the characters characters who have been around for the past nine fucking years i didn't i was yeah. not all that bothered that celestia and luna didn't have their magic the fact that they were willing to hold them off so that the main six can escape was more than enough for me i also love the additional fact that when discord is to like tool from rainbow dash wow that's definitely impressive he's he doesn't care about that he just says just save equestria and keep fluttershy safe he goes to grab a bunch of rocks Oh, that made me forgive Discord so much more. And on top of the fact that when he got his, you know, his chaos magic back, he used the bell to get back the princesses. Right this afterwards. There should be a point out that every every one of the main six during the the big fight had their moment. Even, I think one of my favorite yeah. moments was when um, Spike got th- tossed by Chrysalis. Rarity blocks blocks a shot from chrysalis with her shield she's actually protecting spike and then they both work together to fight off chrysalis and it actually works for a little bit i was yeah. like yeah yeah and, yeah! and when t- uh, like, twilight was what taken i'm saying on... is more of like a minor nitpick honestly like all together i liked the whole thing i just would have liked to have seen the princess go fully i would out. rather take that nitpick than just see the finale go to shit <laughs> yeah hey but bliss no. hey bliss hmm how about that part when um Rarity threw that gigantic boulder at Tyrick? <laughs> yes, it was so I cool seeing Rarity use her powers. When Twilight was literally so about much. to get her head blown off by Tyrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, Rarity, oh. Rarity proved that if, she, if push comes to shove, she'll do what it takes to protect her friends. Yep. She she quite literally pushed herself to do that she is not a very ta- i mean she's your average unicorn she has talent to some extent but we hardly ever really see her teleport she really doesn't do that she doesn't really use her magic for fighting ever for the first time and ever she actually lifted something probably four times her size maybe more that that boulder had to weigh at least a thousand pounds at yeah. least yeah <laughs> Managed to pull an alicorn out of her butt for a split second just to save her friends. That's yeah. amazing. Some good rarity moments in this in this finale. I yeah, think. and I also yeah. I also like yeah. the moment where Twilight was taken on Tarek and jumping on all the different boulders and just strategizing yeah. her surroundings. Yep. Uh poetry. That's some <laughs> shit you would see in the Avengers or in like an Avenger. <laughs> Again, with the you know that reference, you know you can imagine when everybody shows up. Bomb, 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 bomb. Bu- 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 Stop <laughs> making it a meme. We're it, gonna make it's it a al- meme, Bliss. 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 Already a meme. It's already been it's a, a meme, meme for Stop it. It's been a meme for like a p- couple of I years know already. It is. Stop it! Stop it right now! Just stop Everyone it! It's so is annoying! <laughs> it's so annoying! Make it stop! Uh, okay, is there anything else we left out? Because there there was a lot of great moments. There was. It's it's hard yeah, to remember them all off the top of the head. Oh yeah, we've been on this. This is probably the longest part of the podcast so far. 
Oh shit! I mean, it's the series finale of a show that's been with us for like well, nine for years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so it's... I, I think we've said enough. I think we're ready to move on to a much, much smaller topic, and hopefully mellow things down. Long story short, the finale kicked ass. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, beautiful send off. Let's uh, let's go to the past and go for another round of the nostalgia circle. So, Bliss, to run down what this is, we basically exchange turns of what you remember from your past or your childhood that you want to bring forth, and we discuss it. Um, this one, we're going over our favorite horror classics, considering that we're coming mm-hmm. close to Halloween. And, as usual, I go last. I let everybody go first from top to bottom on the roster on the left. Bliss, you're up. I'm up. I'm up. And I'm up. Okay. <laughs> so... I admit, I really want to talk about this classic, but if I do, I would be spoiling my Halloween special. Oh. So, I can't talk about this classic, because you guys are going to hear about it on Halloween Day. All right. All right. I will pick another classic. Okay. Now, Golden, right off the bat, thinks that it's going to be Aliens. (laughs) (laughs) I mean... It's not. It's not. I assure you, it's not. All Tempted, right. but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do have a couple of classics um, from my childhood because I forget I was terrified of these movies back in the day. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is that they were PG or PG-13. They weren't rated R. At least Ooh. I'm pretty sure Jaws wasn't rated R. That was no. It was PG. Yeah, the okay. first one was PG. Okay, so my mom had a strict rule back in the day. Of course, it kind of it kind of led up after she had my my six the six kin. <laughs> but, six kin. Yeah, I'm one out of six kids. People, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and though Krampus is a Christmas special, and it's not a classic, it's so, a, it's a stupid concept. <laughs> yeah. So I, I gotta I gotta go with two of these here. I I want to talk about Jaws and Ghostbusters. Yeah. Fire away. <laughs> okay. Jaws. Now, I, I got to give a little context. Back then, my hearing was atrocious. It wasn't until I was three years old that, that, they, that they discovered I was 80% deaf. So they had a, I had to get tubes surgically implanted in my ears for them to open up, and then, then I could hear, and then I had to go through speech therapy, yada, yada, yada. Now that that's clear out of the way, uh the thing about these films back then i did not understand a word these people were saying (laughs) i didn't get the jokes in ghostbusters why would i (laughs) it doesn't make any sense as far as i know this was a horror film jaws was the whole reason why i was i was scared to go in the ocean but i went anyway (laughs) but no, for the longest time, I remember between the age of five and eight years old, I wanted to be brave for some reason. I wanted to show my siblings that I am brave. I am a brave seven-year-old little girl, and I am going to watch Jaws. Here's what would happen. I would stick in the VHS into the VCR, a box into a box. <laughs> <laughs> I would click the movie, or, or I'd put play on the movie, and as soon as the song came up, da 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 I would immediately hide behind the staircase oh. or behind a chair <laughs> just to make sure I couldn't see the screen and that I would just listen. I would curl up in a ball and listen to the movie, not watch it, just to show how everybody how brave I am. <laughs> <laughs> now with Ghostbusters... For the most part, I could watch it all the way through, but I needed to have my mommy with me or my favorite babysitter (laughs) with me. In fact, my mom would tell me later. (laughs) My mother would tell me later while we were watching Ghostbusters and the first ghost that came out, it was the library ghost. She says, and I quote, that was the first time she ever heard me cuss and went like, oh, mommy. Oh, shit. That's actually great. I love everything about that. <laughs> so, but here's here's the cherry on top. I lost my bravery when Zool came on the screen. 
Zool. Zool, motherfucker, Zool! I was gonna say, who's gonna make the reference? <laughs> I, to this day, people, to this day, I can still watch the movie, I get a little scared, but I still watch it. I am terrified of Zool. I still am. I don't wow. like having the door, and this is another reason why I don't like having lights on at night. I don't want to see light creak it into the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Bliss. Hey, Bliss. Hey, what? Are you a god? Bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to answer. Hold on, hold on. No. Then die. (laughs) Bliss. Boy, if somebody asks you if you're a god, you say yes. (laughs) <laughs> what did you do golden oh shit it popped in my head i'm sorry no 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 you said it wrong it's the state puff marshmallow man <laughs> <laughs> although in this case it would probably be something else something product related um it's the state puff of marshmallows i mean no the state puff oreos there we go <laughs> <laughs> it's a big giant living oreo with like you know, those Mickey Mouse arms just walk around back and forth. Well, and no, 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 like, no, I'll take care of this. What did you do, Golden? <laughs> Shit. I'm and sorry. Goes, I was no. hungry. <laughs> no, no, Golden's like, it's the extra stuffed Oreos. <laughs> 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 but no, so going back to it, it's still a classic. I listen to the theme song every October for Cry It Out Loud. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't blame you. At some point, I need to watch it again because it is October. I love the second movie. We're not talking about the new movie. That's just... No. Absolutely not. <laughs> I did hear that there's still going to be a meh. Ghostbusters 3 next year. Yeah, but that's actually going to be taken care of, hopefully, by Dan Aykroyd. But I don't know who I don't know who else. Somebody who knows the franchise because... Who knows how to handle the material. Because Harold Ramis is no longer with us. Rest in yeah. peace. He's the one. Oh. He played Egon. So mm. it will never be the same. I will, you got to accept that. I will never forget when he used the Twinkie. Let's say this Twinkie. That's a big Twinkie. Yeah, holds about... I'm trying to remember what the line was. Um, according to this morning, San, like represents the average amount of psychokinetic energy in the New York area. According to this morning sample, we're looking at... Something much, much bigger that Harold Ramis would say. That's a big Twinkie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big that, Twinkie. <laughs> uh, 32 feet long, weighing over 3,000 pounds. That's a big Twinkie. <laughs> 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 no, there's so many quotable lines from that film. I could, I mean, I could barely quote it, but I, I am I, to some extent. Yes, he's telling the truth. This man Hello? has no dick. <laughs> are you the key master no. <laughs> what did he say he said no slams door <laughs> she did slam the door in his face after he said no and then immediately after was like, are you, she asks again he's like yes I am yes <laughs> I'm a friend of this he said for me to meet him here I didn't get your name I'm Zul I'm the gatekeeper. Oh, Zul, huh? What are we doing today, Zul? We must prepare for the coming of Goza. Gozer, huh? <laughs> Goza the Gozarian. <laughs> are we still going out? I guess those flowers worked, huh? <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's just so natural. The the, the, the the comedy is so natural that it, you only get that with Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd because they do it all so natural. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, uh, I, I I mean I could go on and on and on. Those are classics for me, and I still I don't care what people say. I still liked the second movie. I thought it was great. I had fun with it. I love the idea yeah. of a an evil yeah. overlord wizard that was in control of an empathic moody slime that was destined to take over the entire city and save me baby Oscar and, 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 and of course um um oh god I forgot the, the character she Diana okay oh, wait, Diana. What was her name? 
yeah, I think her name was. Yeah, I guess that was her name. But no, uh, I won't. I will. <laughs> the <laughs> character Zool will will for will forever be scarred <laughs> into my brain as something I will always fear. It's kind of like with that um that sound effect from American World of London, which is another great classic oh. I can go on about, but I don't want to take up too much Ooh. time. But I will look up that sound effect because that sound effect is still haunting me to this day. Oh, it's such a fun sound effect. <laughs> Let me find that. <laughs> Watch me get copyright from it too. No, you won't. <laughs> uh -huh. There. Oh yeah, because not sorry only about the that sound, movie, by the way. <clears throat> yeah, I can't it, even. Not hear only it. is that like probably the best werewolf movie for me. It's probably the best werewolf transformation ever. Oh, hands down. Yeah. Just good practical effects in that film. Oh, here we go. Uh, okay, I think this is it. <laughs> I just want to say, ow, my ears! <laughs> 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 I care more about my eardrums than my own life. That's pretty pathetic. <laughs> uh, can you can kill me, just don't kill my eardrums. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Let it haunt your dreams. <laughs> 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 this is so terrifying it's like it's yeah. not even a roar a dog howling roar it's just so aggressively violent mm. yeah I, I think that's the idea yeah <laughs> okay i relinquish the floor to riley Sorry. well hold on you said you were going to talk about jaws weren't you oh i want to talk about jaws so talk about jaws <laughs> i mean if you um okay um, enough, I was gonna talk about there will Jaws, never be a movie like Jaws ever again. Let's face it, people. Oh yeah, no. Every other shark movie uh, is questionable, and let's we never ever talk about Jaws four. Uh, I don't know. What you're I about. only watch Jaws to laugh at it. <laughs> Jaws, Jaws the Revenge to laugh at it. <laughs> you know Are what? Are we allowed to talk about Sharknado? <laughs> do not. Do, do not. Don't mention do that. Not. Okay, I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna take not. that as a big fat no. Then I will kill you. Do not. <laughs> Please. Don't I will kill destroy me. you. We do not talk about that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes, people. For those who don't know, there's Jaws, Jaws Two, Jaws 3D, mm. Jaws: The Revenge. <laughs> there's four Jaws movies in total. It's not called Jaws Four. It's called Jaws: The Revenge. And the sad thing about this revenge, you know, as awesome of a name as it is, it's not a good movie. As a matter of fact, it's one of the few movies on Rotten Tomatoes that has a zero percent. Yeah, oh, it's bad. Holy shit. Yeah, it's just bad. That's I rare. Would... Okay, I would argue that Jaws 3D had a good idea, just not executed well. Yeah. Especially when it came to the... <laughs> you want to call it 3D? <laughs> <laughs> like, like Jaws, the first film, I watch for nostalgia, for the time zone. I mean, not the time zone, the timeline, because that was a simpler time. For, for the fact that it was scary to go into the water during those times. That that movie scared a lot of people and ended up. Oh yeah, it created such a fiasco. Unfortunately, which was not Steven Spielberg's uh, main goal. Well, sure, he meant to scare people, but he had no intention of making a species dang near go extinct yeah. because people were so scared of gray white sharks, and then they wanted to hunt them down as trophies. It was awful. Oh but my god. Result, yeah, but as a result, yeah. to, I mean, I, I mean, I learned this from Shark Week, people. I, I, I'll get to that in a second. Um, sharks maybe kill maybe three to ten people in a year worldwide. You know how many sharks we kill in a year? How much? Uh, about ten million. Good. Yeah. What? 
Wow, I that's going to guess that the number was way higher. That is than higher that. than I expected. I thought it would be like 10,000 or something at, at the most. No, it, it's shit. well in the million category. Good lord. Holy shit. We, yeah, we, literally. They they are they are hunt, they are hunted. They uh they get their fins cut off. They're eaten in soups. They're they're a popular food item in certain countries. They're hunted for um trophies. It's it's just true. This is why Shark Week was invented to help educate the public about how we need to protect the shark, how we need to be educated that they're not lethal, horrible creatures that are out to get us. If anything, they hate eating us. They we, they don't like oh, the yeah. taste of people. They mistake all. a lot of people for like seals and shit. That's why they sometimes attack people is because they mistake them for other animals. Yeah, I like, could be I've, wrong on my number, but I do know it's in the millions. But, I will say this. Um, I will say this much. I actually seen a clip or two. Yeah. One of which is a woman who actually has a series of pet sharks and actually swims around them. Um, yeah. I saw this on Twitter, and I thought I was like, "Holy crap, that's impressive." The other of which, and I kid you not, uh, what's this guy's name? It's Mark something. He's a scientist who tests things out in bizarre ways. Mm -hmm. Fuck, I forgot what his name was. He's a very, very popular YouTuber. He uh, he's the one who created that that device for anybody who steals a package. I'm, oh, I that engineer guy. Yeah, he en he engineers things and tests things. How many yeah. sharks are killed each year? Let me search. Oh, oh God! What? Oh I, no, that's oh, not good. That no, this is really bad. Okay, I said ten million a year. Um, I thought my number might have been too high, and I went to check. Approximately. <sighs> Do you really want me to read this? You might as well. Yeah. Yeah. Approximately a hundred million sharks are. Oh my God! Jesus Christ! What the and fuck? One of the major incentives for this is shark fin trade. Uh, yeah, that actually kind of makes. How many sharks are killed each year? Twenty eighteen. Oh my god. Last year god. there were 155 incidents of elite shark human interactions worldwide with only five people being killed as a result. By the end of June 2018, just one person had been killed by a shark anywhere on the planet. Yeah. Okay. So <sighs> you know I, hold on. Go ahead. I wanna rip some but hang on, I wanna rip Wolfhead Brody for a reason why never to bring up Sharknado again. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, I know no. for a fact Sharknado is not meant to be taken seriously. It's supposed to be a really stupid shark action film, right? Here's yeah. what I don't like about it. They play it on Shark Week, for one. The one time where we're supposed to educate people <gasps> about protecting sharks. Oh. And here they yeah. go playing this stupid film and having people kill sharks on screen. And two, and this is the big one, this is on a humanity level, when they were showing flooding and hurricanes, they were using real raw footage of actual hurricane incidences to make their movie oh, oh. okay that's you nice. have so, got to be kidding me so the the hell with you sharknado films i do not support them i'm not gonna hit on, i'm not gonna slap people if they like to watch them or not i'm explaining why i don't it's disgusting mm. to me. Okay, that makes a lot more sense compared to the, you know, whatever, you know, stupid intentions were of making a film that's just not meant to be taken seriously. But I'm I'm in utter shock about this. Let, let, me, let, let's, let this be a lesson to anybody who listens in this podcast. If you're afraid of going out to the ocean and you see shark, if you're afraid of encountering sharks, it's plain and simple. Just be as distant as you can. Don't go thinking that killing them will do justice to humanity. It's quite the opposite. Just understand that when you go into the ocean, you might as well be entering Yellowstone Park. You're entering their territory, just like you're entering the territory of bears. Yeah. yeah. And so mistaken identity is going to happen. And the best way to avoid it is follow these simple safety steps. Don't wear jewelry. Don't wear really bright swimsuits. Obviously, don't go with open cuts and wounds. Yeah, that'll um, draw their attention. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's well, I'll get to that in a bit. Swimming near rocky areas or where there's sea lions and seals where great whites normally hunt, that's a big no-no. I mean, do so at your own risk. If anything, when you go into the ocean, acknowledge that you're putting yourself at risk. That's just simple as that. But going back to Jaws, Jaws was based off a book. 
Yeah. yeah. A, the book was based on true events. And now here is interesting about the true events. The true events took place during Rhode Island in New Jersey. And it was a series of shark attacks. I, yep. I think it was about five attacks. And a few of them were unfortunately fatal, including a child and a, and a man. Yep. Um, they happened on the coast. And then the other attacks happened up river. Yep. Now, everybody assumed that it was a rogue great white doing this because only a great white is big enough to take on a human, right? No! Incorrect, sirs! Nope. <laughs> according to scientists, during that time, first off, there were a lot of people in the water that year. A ton of people because they were having a heat wave, mm -hmm. an unusual heat wave. So where does everybody go? The beach. People yeah. go to the beach. They're splashing in water and all sorts of stuff. Now, here's another thing which Side Steel Rail literally just pointed out. Mm -hmm. Bull sharks are probably the most aggressive shark in the yep. entire world. And not only are they the most aggressive, they can swim up river. Yep. Mm -hmm. They can go they to fresh water. They're very common here in the Texas coast, too. They are not to be messed with. They are territorial. Uh, if they go into a frenzy, no, they won't hesitate to attack. And they, but they prefer not to because you know they would prefer something smaller. Um, my point is, though, is that there's always a reasonable, logical ex explanation why these attacks occur. It certainly does not justify killing. My God, I'm actually no. about to cry. A million, a hundred million sharks a year. Jesus Christ. A hundred million. <laughs> Now, going back to Jaws, though, I love the movie. I do love it for its for its creativity, for using what they could use in that time because the shark Bruce, they called it the robot Bruce, yeah. <laughs> kept failing the whole time. <laughs> um, Steven Sp Spielberg quoted he had no intention of endangering sharks ever or trying to make people be scared of the water. In fact, you know what my mom talk to me about the ocean and what she feared the most. See, I used to think she was afraid of sharks too. No, in fact, she didn't like us kids going too far into the water because of this one reason. Undercurrent. Under uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Texas coastlines, specifically Galveston coast area, we have really strong undercurrents. Basically, imagine like a Picture this, Golden. It's a river under the water. Huh. A strong, powerful river underneath yep. the water itself. Now, these currents can be as could be in as shallow as three feet, four feet, five feet. You go out far enough, the current will start to take you out to sea if you're not careful. Yikes. Yeah. You need to be a strong swimmer. Otherwise, you might discover you're three miles away from shore. I've had this mm -hmm. incident happen to me once when I was 13 where um, I didn't get pulled out mm -hmm. to sea by like a mile, but I got pulled away from the beach far enough that I had to be at least a mile away from where our beach setup was. Jesus. Just just down the beach. I wasn't out in the water, just further down oh, the beach. Oh, okay, good. good. Yeah. Oh, okay, so good. I had to struggle to swim back to the beach line, and then I realized I couldn't swim back. Uh, directly back to our towel area so i ended up swimming back directly in front of me it took me an hour an hour of swimming and then i had to walk back to our beach line by the time i got there and i was by myself i ended up throwing up <laughs> just heaving up salt water because it kept splashing into my mouth and then i passed oh, out yeah. yikes it, it, it's it's no joke the undercurrents in the ocean at the beach don't mess around. Those are lethal. Those are dangerous. You're lucky. You're you're likely to get in trouble with that than with a shark. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm gonna keep that noted. Um, I'm gonna refer back to what I was talking about earlier. His name was Mark Rober, and he does some like bizarre engineering for silly, you know, whatever. He was actually testing out a group of sharks. He tested out animal blood. He tested out. Um, he tested out urine, and he tested out a lot of things. Then he actually swam into the ocean, and no shark attacked him. They just swam around. They, sw they swam around him. 
So mm-hmm. lit- quite literally, like the sharks, they're really not as threatening as you think they are. It's understandable that if you're terrified of sharks, yeah, you may want to just get distant from them, but don't don't kill them off. That's horrible. Yeah. No. I mean, <sighs> I think we've said plenty about this at this point. Obviously, don't gamble with sharks. Don't think it's okay to go swimming with them. That's like saying it's okay to walk and run around with a bear. Yeah, yeah. No. don't do that. Yeah, don't absolutely do that. not. Just, just respect the wildlife. The yeah. ocean is the biggest wildlife park you're ever going to step foot in. <laughs> okay, so I think we've said plenty about Jaws and Ghostbusters. Are we ready to pass the turn to Riley? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm ready. Okay, Riley, go ahead and tell uh, what what horror classics do you like? Like, it, like at most, name two. Well, I was gonna do Jaws, but bless you, pretty much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll just say this: oh, you pulled my rug from up under you at that point. <laughs> I've always had a fear of open water that that still doesn't change. I don't like to be in water that I can't see the bottom of, mm. and that, that that still hasn't changed to this day. I I, I will not swim out farther than like. Mm, maybe six feet of water on the beach or so. But um, I'd say one of my favorite horror classics, and this is getting like kind of... Um, I- I- I'd be very surprised if people remember this. There was a Stephen King miniseries that came out in like 2002 called Stephen King's Rose Red. And this mm. miniseries is about mm, three to four hours long, as you do with a miniseries. And it centers about around this house uh, in upstate Washington that... it. Ha- after the owners died, it kept expanding on its own. The story is based around the Winchester Mansion uh, story with uh, how she kept trying to build up the mansion to appease the ghost of the people killed by the uh, guns. And it's it's it has some of the best elements that I really like. Like it involves psychics, it involves ghosts, it involves just so many creepy images. And it, when I was a kid, it just creeped me so much. It creeped me out so much that I would have nightmares about some of the the designs of some of like I, I wouldn't even call them ghosts. They were they were beyond like life and death. They were just eerie to look at in general. And it, it mm. it's ever since I was a kid, I was like really obsessed with horror films and I would like honestly rent them more than some animated films. <laughs> All right. But Stephen King's Rose Red is very underrated in my opinion. If you like anything about like psychics, the paranoia, the para- uh, paranormal, I'm paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a watch just to experience on its own, and it raises some interesting ideas. I think about the paranoia. The par- again, I say paranoia for some reason. I, I guess that's on my mind. <laughs> I'm a very paranoid person. <laughs> I guess um, I guess somebody from that movie is like twisting your mind and tricking you into misspeaking what? the word hello. Yeah, you uh, cut out. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Discord, you had one you're job. Fine you're, no, fine you're, you're fine now. now. You're fine now. But with Rose Red, it's it's just very it's really well done it has like this own its own lore to it including a prequel movie that like goes into depth about uh depth about the owner of the house and how it like it it, it had a history of two things men would end up dead <gasps> women would end up missing and it always oh. had like a particular the house itself has like its own aura and it's an its own identity itself like you couldn't even say it's like just haunted you could just say the house itself is evil and it just like it it mixes all my favorite type of like parent paranormal uh horror these weird like really creepy designs for the creatures in it and it, mm-hmm. it it's it and i love the acting in general and it, it it's really it doesn't get enough uh, love i think but um honestly yeah the, like those are the two things that like ever since i was a kid i really liked jaws i i, I still ha- like i said i still have a hard time with open water <laughs> I, I, one of my worst, worst nightmares is being out adrift into sea and having to like paddle back to shore and like what's down there what's gonna get me like what kind of creature is down there that i can't see it just Oh, that's kind of my worst fear, uh, honestly. I can kind of see that, yeah. I I just, I 
the ocean is one of the scariest things because we don't it's one of the few places on earth where we know probably the least about yeah yeah there's a lot of so, unknown there so yeah no i can understand yeah. that entirely so yeah pretty much that i as far like we're probably going to do this again sometime but Honestly, yeah, that that's pretty much. It. Oh, and if you want to know more about Jaws, as Blissy was saying, there's a great like behind the scenes uh, documentary about the making of the film. I heard it was a nightmare. It was a fucking nightmare to film. Like they had the problems with the shark breaking down a lot of the time, which led to they had to creative. They had to like work in how. Like that's where the whole like uh, POV shot from the shark came from was they had it breaking down so much that they had to like improvise and do something else creepy <laughs> and that worked very well. Um, there was the fact that the guy who played like the drunken sailor was actually drunk during his scenes. Like oh, every wow. scene, he was actually <laughs> drunk on set. I think he took I'm his role kidding. too literally. <laughs> Um, yeah, dude, he's he's playing his part. Just let him be, dude. <laughs> the, op the opening scene, you know, the scene where we see the girl going like being like t like being pulled back and forth and stuff like that. Yeah, that was like her terror is real because they actually had to do that, and it was really her, and it was really like scary for her. So that was like a nightmare for her to film. Mm. It's a, it's a it's a it's a miracle the film turned out as well as it did in general because of just how much of a nightmare it was to film. The thing that's yeah. crazy about all of this is that that movie would later launch off Steven Spielberg's career along oh, with yeah. John Williams. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the that was the original original film that it was. Both their yeah, it was a off. nightmare that turned into a goddamn miracle for everybody involved with the film. Mm-hmm. And also, I've actually been to the set or where it was shot. Uh, the whole film was basically shot on Martha's Vineyard. And I've actually been to the beach where both the scene where the kid gets eaten in the sea and mm -hmm. that bridge scene that we see the kids jumping off of and stuff. Yeah. So that, that movie has a special place in my heart, both for like my fear of the sea and just my love of the of horror films in general so i just want to mention that, that we can actually hear the microwave sound coming from bliss's end i thought that was my microwave for a second like i actually believed i had food in the microwave that i forgot about <laughs> so watch when bliss gets back i'm gonna be like hey bliss what you cook in the microwave <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i want the whole chat to be like hey bliss what are you eating <laughs> So, anything else, Riley? No, that's pretty much all I could think of off the top of my head, and so I'll pass it on to Wolfhead. All right, Wolfhead, any horror classics that you uh, appreciate or admire? Uh, yes, for the first half of both of them. Some horror classics that I liked as a teenager were more gory than horror. They oh, were, um, boy. They were Final Destination, oh, and they oh. were Saw. Now, oh. I'm going to come right off the bat. I'm going to come right off the bat. Like, be before I, I, I discovered Saw in Final Destination, I would just watch reruns of um, Friday the 13th all the time, and I would just watch all those movies back to back. Uh, I think my favorite scene from one of the Jason movies, or Friday the 13th, rather, is a scene in Jason X, and it's going to get a little lewd what I'm about to say. Jason Jason apparently has turned into a cyborg, and he's walking around trying to find the teenagers <laughs> to kill on the fucking ship. The whole, the whole movie has gone ridiculous by this point. I don't know why they turned Jason into a fucking cyborg, but he's a cyborg now. And he goes into a room that's a hologram, and they try to trick Jason. This is how they try to trick Jason. They digitalize two naked lesbians. And oh, yeah. yeah remember right. that? Remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they make up two naked lesbians, and they're like, oh, hey, big boy. And then they just get into their... Want to watch this their premarital <laughs> set? <laughs> I swear to God, they get into their sleeping bags, and the shot is, and, and the sh it's it's shot as if Jason is gonna fool around with these teenagers, and I'm just like, this is so fucking ridiculous. It's like he's a cyborg. He doesn't have a dick. What are this, you doing, man? This literally, this literally sounds like the most fan fiction scenario off of any film. Period. Jason X Dude. is like a really enjoyingly, enjoyably bad film. Like I enjoy yeah. watching it. I've seen this before. Or yeah. Hey, hey, nobody lightning, panic? hey, Bliss, what were you cooking in the microwave? I was yeah. like, nobody panic. 
Uh, popcorn. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, then. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, and so like it looks like Jason is about to fool around with these teenagers, <laughs> right? Which make no goddamn sense whatsoever. And then the next shot is Jason holding one of the sleeping bags and it's bloody, and he's bashing it against the hologram tree like yeah. really, really hard with the, with the hologram lady in it. And so like he just drops it and continues on his murder spree. I have never laughed so hard in my god. <laughs> that is life. just a funny scene. It's so like meta. But it, no, oh. that, that's like a, with me and Freddy in the third movie. And he's like, "Don't forget the power glove." <laughs> <laughs> but was yeah, that, was that Dream I Warriors? I, I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just processing just the very idea of fucking Jason being a cyborg and projecting two lesbians to take care of a victim. <laughs> oh, let me see if I can find the scene and Dude, post it Dude, somebody in the chat. find that scene and send it to Golden immediately. It is the most funny, <laughs> this is, this is something thing. I will. This is definitely homework I'll look into after I'll the podcast is over. I will definitely find it. What movie, what Jason movie was it again? Jason, Jason, Jason X. X. Alright, give me a minute. Alright. Yeah. Like, we're not gonna watch oh. it, obviously. You know, no. we Yeah, don't gonna... do it. It's full frontal nudity. You'll get in trouble. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, as is, we talked about some pretty sensitive subject matters, but no. Um, so, so was it Jason X you were actually talking about? Like you mentioned, no, it was just I wanted to mention that scene from Jason X. But my 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 two most favorite film franchises for horror or gore, scary stuff, yeah. is Final Destination, the first half of the franchise, and Saw, the first half of the franchise. Because mm. when you go down the list of Final Destination and Saw. Shit just gets kind of boring and predictable. Mm-hmm. So in Final Destination, there's o- there's only so many ways that you can like kill people with random objects that you just start going, all right, I fucking get it. I don't I don't need to see it anymore, you know. But I, I have to appreciate Final Destination for what it was, at least at the beginning, because I remember I saw that film and I it legit made me afraid to do anything. It's like, am I going to turn on my TV and it's going to explode and shards of glass are going to go in my face? Like, I have no idea. So I have to appreciate Final Destination for that, at least. And Saw, Saw, I thought it was interesting because I thought Jigsaw was an interesting character up until he got killed in Saw 3. And then the rest of the Saws just came out and you're kind of like, all right, I get the point. He has apprentices. They do what he do. I, I get the point. I get it from here. You don't. I don't need to see any more of the Saw films. So yeah, yeah. I've, but I did think Saw was interesting, though. It was like I, I. The only Saw movie I saw was the first one, and the first one it actually did leave me feeling a little petrified right at the very end. Like up until okay. that point, though, seeing how everybody's figuring everything out. Um, but yeah. the very end, when they find out though, you know where the keys were and that the killer was actually in the center of the cell the whole time. The dude yeah. is cuffed in the dark Spoilers, the alone. Way. Yeah. That is a fucked up way to go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's going to starve and time, decay in the dark. If you ever I... find time, just watch Saw 2 and Saw 3 and don't watch any of the other Saws. Yeah. Because that's where they, shit goes downhill. Yeah, that's where they melt too much of it. Yeah. There's like eight, like eight Saw movies out right now, I, I think. Probably. Oh, I found the scene. Including Jigsaw, which is its own movie. Um, so, I but yeah, that's all I had to say. That's all I had to say about that. Okay, so the first half of that one. What was the other one? Uh, Final Destination. Final Destination. Okay, I remember that one. <laughs> Final Destination <laughs> made you scared of everything, and I'm not joking. Like Because people would... The, the premise of the movie is that, like, okay, you get on an airplane. It's flight number 1960, whatever the fuck. And this number has great significance, right? Because you see the number popping up everywhere these people go, and then they just start dying in the most inconspicuous, dumbest ways. Like, you get your head caught in an elevator Mm -hmm. door, and then the elevator goes up. Oh, you're just decapitated now. And you're standing standing next to a train, and the train's chain picks up some debris, and the debris slices your head off. Like, it's, it's... it makes you afraid of everyday situations, and that's why I can appreciate Final Destination. But everything after Final Destination 3, don't watch it, because it just gets ridiculous. Like, I don't know which Final Destination was the one with the bridge collapsing, 
But that, that was, one is completely That ridiculous. was the one called the Final Destination, even though it wasn't the Final Destination. There was one more after that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, I do yeah, like... don't watch that one. Yeah, I do like the idea or the premise that, you know, for whoever's, like, whoever's the next turn to die, and it indicates through just a series of events and trying yeah. to prevent them from happening. Like, I think that's a very, like, intense premise that you want to try to like help somebody else out. Like I've seen that. And I think it was final destination three where, um, okay. There was, there were two characters who were in a drive through and they got stuck and a van was about to come down and the oh, engine yeah, was. smashed a guy's head. Like it propelled it. And the funny yeah. thing is, is that that was a bit of karma himself because he was flipping off. Um, the other dude is like, Hey, move. There's a truck coming in. It's like, no, fuck you. It's like, okay, well that's your, that's your <laughs> problem now, buddy. <laughs> But I also yeah. remember one where a woman slipped and fell in a warehouse and a hammer gun literally like pierced through multiple nails. Oh, that nails was a to nail her... gun. Yeah. You remember the one where they're face. in the tanning bed? <laughs> yeah, the one where they're in the tanning bed and they can't get out and water yeah. is leaking on the thing and it's turning it up higher and higher. Yeah. I <laughs> yep. that oh, one. God. <laughs> the funniest death from Final Destination 3 is the death at the end where everyone the dies. fucking edge lord no not everyone dies but the edge lord emo kid is walking up to the to the group of two people and he's like no i'm dead anyway why not just kill me why not just kill me right now and then the thing falls on him and it slices his body in half but Ouch. he has the middle finger going he has like the middle finger on his hand as he's dying as if he's saying fuck everybody in the world <laughs> that shit was funny. it's like bitch i'm out <laughs> fuck this shit i'm out <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Final Destination is a good series, the first half of it, and Saw series is a good series, the first half of it. And that's my that's my plea. That's my pledge. All right. So, <laughs> um Okay, so um <laughs> for any horror classics I'm going to go over, I'm going to mention one franchise and probably one movie of a franchise because I didn't okay. watch the rest of them first of all, and second I heard they got downward afterwards. And that movie is A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh. Yes, dude, Freddy versus Jason. Did you see that? I that have yet. Okay, I have to. Ever. I have yet to see that movie, but I did. Like, I did see like how people saw the rest of the Freddy Krueger movies, and I can see the downward spiral. Like one of which he has a kid. I mean, it just got weirder <laughs> and weirder along the way. But no, the mm. first one, what actually caught my interest was approaching the time when there was the remake happening, which was absolute garbage. Don't watch it. It's not yeah. worth it. Yeah, don't watch it. Yeah, I no, think the it, Friday... I think the Friday um, uh, 13th remake is garbage as well. Well, it's I from think, the same people. Yeah. They did a remake of that. They did a remake of Halloween and all the slasher films that were revolutionary during the 80s and late 70s. But no, mm -hmm. um... Upon encountering that, uh, the director for the remake was given out his uh, top five favorites from Rotten Tomatoes, and one of which was the original Nightmare on Elm Street. And the scene that caught my attention and wanted to watch it is one of the most iconic scenes, and it's the first victim. I think her name was Nancy. Apparently, in her, she was getting killed in her sleep, and her body was levitating above the mattress and then up to the ceiling. And oh, yeah. No, that wasn't Nancy. That was her friend. Nancy's the main protagonist. Okay, Nancy's the main protagonist. It was one of her friends. I forgot what her yeah. name was. But the yeah, way I did, she... I did too, but she was violently... Oh, yeah. yeah, no, she was, like, struggling, and her body was, like, swinging back and forth. Half the time, I'm like, holy shit, that's freaky. And second, how did the filmmakers do that? <laughs> they actually had to, like, spin that room. Like, if you look at the making of that scene, they physically made the set so that they spun the room that she was in. Like, that's that's all practical effects. There's, like, that no... That was an amazing setup. I didn't yeah. even realize that the room was spinning. Holy shit. Yeah, it was it was made to look like yeah, it was all like um special uh, practical effects. The really other ones well they probably have to use like a pole string for like close up effects. Like there's one scene where she swings and uh knocks into Johnny Depp and knocks over the phone when uh, trying to call for help. Mm. And then yeah. yeah, and then seeing her get dragged to the ceiling like that was probably that was probably like filmed upside down. But then again, Johnny Depp was still there, so it's like how the fuck did they do that? 
So, yeah. like, th- those moments were, like, it, in and of itself, it's fucking intense that she gets dragged up to the ceiling and she falls. But when I first saw that clip, I was like, okay, I gotta see the movie itself. This is fucking mm-hmm. crazy. And it was worth it because I had such a big impression with what kind of moments were there and what intense moments were such, you know, were worth the watch. Um, freaking, okay, it wasn't Johnny Depp who was uh, in that room, but... I do remember that he got dragged inside the mattress and nothing but blood splatters all over the ceiling. And I'm just like, again, I was like, did they like reverse the footage or something? I mean, what the hell is up with that? And then I found out (laughs) they actually had another room and it was upside down, but the uh, camera itself was backward, uh, backside up or no, the camera was upside down along with the room. And when they actually had the blood splatter scene, they just had to, you know, flip the, um, flip the footage the other way or so oh, yeah. yeah the so pra- the practical effects were so good in that first these film practi- the, it's stuff like this that just doesn't exist anymore yeah no, no. like it yeah. just proves everything you don't... is digital now. yeah no everything is yeah. so digitized it's ridiculous but no the, those me those moments were so fun to watch and along with that um there was one minor scene but i still um i still enjoyed watching uh that guy who saw, uh, you know, his girlfriend and was accused of murder. He was in the prison and he was in a sleep and he was trying to call for help, but because he was asleep, he can't call for help. So he's being drugged up by his neck and then he got hung. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, those moments left me such an impression. And I also just like the idea of, you know, this guy who comes to kill you in your sleep because it's a scare. Uh, it's a very scary feeling that you never know if you're going to die in your sleep. You know, you don't want to end, like end up like what happened to George Michael. I mean, good Lord. Yeah. Well, I mean, considering yeah. that, I mean, consider this, whether you, whether you're a night owl or not, or you're an insomniac, eventually your body has to shut down. If you stay up for nine days in a row, I'm not kidding, nine days straight, no breaks, no naps, no mm-hmm. power naps, you just stay up for nine whole days, you're dead. Yeah. You you will die. Your body will give out. Your brain will shut down. You will die. Mm. So the very thought that a demon soul or an evil entity can kill you in your sleep you think well okay i just won't go to sleep ever again physically impossible unless you want to die physically in the real world you have to sleep that is terrifying yeah yeah, yeah yeah and i thought that was a very good premise oh yeah and there was also the scene where um nancy got dragged inside the tub Wait, got what? say that again you cut out God damn it, Discord! <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna need a take two on that. Okay, can I can I be heard now? Yes. Okay, the scene where Nancy got dragged inside the tub. Mm, mm. Oh yeah, with the hand coming out of the water. <laughs> and I want to point out. These are supposed to be kids. They kind of don't look like kids. They're, I mean, I guess they're teenagers, right? They're not in their 20s yeah. yet. They're implied to be teenagers. Okay, mm-hmm. so it doesn't matter if you're under... It doesn't really matter if you are 16 or 10. If you're not in the 20-year range, you are fair game. Yeah, and just the very idea that in order to face this demon, you actually have to rest. And it's just like... You're only like you're on so much borrowed time at that point if you're going to be the next victim. And seeing how Nancy had to plan all of this out, it it impresses me that the she actually has to plan all that out. Like this was probably the movie that influenced Home Alone. Let's let's be real here. She yeah, plans the hammer. That. She probably plans yeah, other traps that. for Freddy. You know, discovering that hey, <laughs> Freddy can be brought in real life, and I actually like that she was like thinking with her wits and everything. So yeah, um, I really loved the premise of what they were going for on that one, and the twist ending. It's a horror movie. Horror movies are going to have twist endings, so I was not surprised about that. But yeah, I did see the remake in a red light way, way too much on the jump scares and some of the CGI that was used in replacement. That's kind of, of a problem with a lot of modern day horror. Let's be honest. Well, okay, not yeah, all horror a lot of films. Modern day horror is not that good now. Yeah, no, yeah. okay, no. I will I will name at least one. It's called Get Out. 
Get Out, I, I heard, was that. phenomenal. It was good. I saw it in theaters. And the same creator, Jordan Peele, made a movie called Us. Chrissy actually yep. loved that more than um, Get Out. I have yet to see Us, but Get Out, it's it's a movie that will actually freak you out. It's It goes places. So, mm. putting aside from A Nightmare on Elm Street, a film franchise, or at least the original, I didn't too mind with the remake, but I am also I am a big fan of the Evil Dead trilogy. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Cause oh, it, I love those films, too. Yeah, okay, so personal history, I didn't watch uh, Evil Dead until I was 25. And that's because Same. I... Yeah, it's because I barely knew anything about it. I just heard, okay, so it has its own following. It's probably... It looks a little bit more silly compared to the other ones. But I didn't have access to any media until eventually I had Netflix and there was the Evil Dead movies. And I thought, oh, yeah, that's right. It was close to Halloween. It's like, I might as well give it a watch. I actually love all three of them for their own they're, reasons. They're so good in so many different ways. Yeah, uh, like okay, like my, let's like obviously my favorite is easily Evil Dead Two. That was one of the funnest movies I have ever yeah, watched. Yeah, it yeah. was so wild and crazy with what happens to whatever victims <laughs> on top of what happens <laughs> to fucking Ash. Like you have you have a scene where it kind of recaps what happened in the first movie using one character that he was in a relationship with and they take it to a different route. You have a hand obsessed who's literally smacking his own head with a series of plates. It's getting punched. It's being tossed over and you have to saw it off. You can't get any more batshit crazy than that. <laughs> <laughs> and not Don't to mention the scene with the with the screaming animals on the wall. Yes, oh, <laughs> the laughing it ones. Was just I mean, like he was just going after his hand, and they're all just laughing along with. And he's just like, "What the fuck am I watching? I don't know what." And then it is. he starts going insane laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and like also it had one of the most badass ways to go out in uh near the end of the film he takes the he t he attaches a saw to his sawed off hand and his other one is his fucking shotgun that he saws the barrels off and he's able to just kick ass like i've had enough of this shit and i can definitely see where the influences of duke nuke have come from groovy yeah <laughs> um, I watched them in chronological order. I watched the first movie, and I was entertained. Like, okay, so it's a bunch of demons who are possessing. It's freaky. They have these stop motion animations when it comes to the end. It's like, it was a good movie, and I felt like you know what? I kind of want to talk about this. So I I did make a vlog series. You're not going to see it anymore. So you're not going to get um. So forget about that if you're going to try to look it up. <laughs> but I enjoyed okay, it. Okay, we got say the line. Say the line. Hail to the this key. is my. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, I'm going to put a pin on that until I get to the actual moment. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, but no, I saw that one, and I, I still remember a lot of the scenes, like one of which was, you know, they have a possessed woman and having this speech saying, you will die like the others before you. Swallow one your soul. by Swallow one. Your soul. No, not that one. I'm talking about the, the demon speech saying, one by one, we will take you. You know, I have this, like, distorted voice. It's very unnerving to hear. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can tell how cheesy it is in its own right. Like, this is Sam Raimi working with such a low-budget film. And oh, it's yeah. still impressive yeah. to this day with what they were working with. Um, oh, it, definitely. Yeah, like, obviously the first movie, it definitely had its start. The second movie was just all over the place. And then we come to Army of Darkness, and it was such a satisfying ending. Like, obviously, I love the second one more, but the third one, I'm going to quote it now. This is my boomstick. There you go. <laughs> First class, top of the line. Shop at S-Smart. Shop smart. Shop. Shop two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's so much stupid shit like you have ash and he somehow gets cloned to another dude like up until that point there's like a bunch of little ashes walking by and one of which he tries to step on him is like london bridge is falling down <laughs> just this is a crazy ass movie <laughs> same man the two is honestly my favorite as well oh yeah no the two will always be my favorite but the third one th th you can easily tell it was gonna be like it it's as if the creator saw, like, it thought, didn't give a shit it didn't it care did not you care. have a dude get sucked into a fucking book and after he struggles to get out he's got this long ass cartoon face until he shakes it off 
<laughs> I mean, while he's being Good. sucked in, his Bad. hand and his arms are being stretched. It's like, yeah, nope, this movie just doesn't care. <laughs> Um, I also love the practical effects, like they have the puppeteered um, yeah. skeletons when they're playing the flutes. <laughs> and near the end, like near the end of the movie, they're all like retreating. They're like, retreat, retreat, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I absolutely love um, the Evil Dead movies, like the originals. Uh, the remake, it was okay. They definitely took Maybe that whole so serious much. route. The thing that yeah. the thing that was really irritating me was how poorly convenienced it was to start the film. Like you have a dude who finds his book saying, "Do not read this book," but he does it anyway because I hey, mean, morbid curiosity has to be such a plot convenience. I mean, if you saw a book and it said, "Dude, do not read," wouldn't you want to look at it? No, I why would it be there for you to read it then? <laughs> Because, okay, when you think about a later scene, it was trying to burn the book and it wouldn't work. Like, he was, like, I, he, maybe somebody else tried to get rid of the Necronomicon, which is probably why it was wrapped up in a garbage bag, probably buried somewhere. Mm. I mean, it's, it's just like, it's trying to pass the message. Don't read this fucking book or you're going to be in a world of shit. <laughs> <laughs> now you see why. <laughs> You should have wrote that on the book instead of don't read the that book. On the book yeah. <laughs> You'll listen to Why me then. Why was that written on the damn book? So, just, no, I'm going to quote this. I was told not to read the Necronomicon, but I didn't listen. <laughs> but I didn't listen. <laughs> So, yeah, um, A Nightmare on Elm Street, loved it. The Evil Dead trilogy, loved it. The remake was okay. Oh, my God. Like, it's like I, I could go on all day about the Evil Dead movies because they're just stupid fun. They're stupid fun that do Ash have... I versus Evil Dead. I still have yet to see that, too, but even then, I still love the movies. Mm. So that's definitely something to recommend. At this point, we're, we've spoken long enough about this one. I think we're ready to move on to Q&A. Yeah, uh, yeah. Huzzah. How long have we been going now? Like almost two and a half hours. Yeah, oh shit! Ooh, I was That's gonna say three be record. hours. Oh yeah, no, this is probably the longest <laughs> entry so far. You know, like hey. Bliss had a lot to say about Ghostbusters and Jaws. Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> but also, we had a lot to say Jaws. about the series finale. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. A, it's been a good podcast. <laughs> it has been. Um. So yeah, let's go to Q and A, guys. Go ahead and uh, give out your questions. We'll try to answer as best as we can. Mm. We just have to give ourselves a bit because there's always a delay, and you have to wait for people to type it in and stuff like that. Um. Have you? Have the rest of you guys enjoyed the podcast so far? Mm-hmm. I have. You're asking us or the I'm asking at, us or them. You know what? I, I'm going to go ahead and say both because we've been all over the place. Oh, yeah. It's been fun. It's just lots to talk about in general. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, that's the thing that's fun about podcasts. You know, you have things to talk about and you just want to share it and talk about, you know, something that's recent, you know, just for, you know, a good time to kill, you know, if somebody wants to listen to it. Okay, so uh, first question: Golden ever thought of reviewing a goofy movie? Um, what no, do you I say not. there, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> yep. God damn it, Riley! <laughs> I killed him. <laughs> Murder! Murder! Murder. <laughs> we can do it again. Um, but if people want me to review a goofy movie at some point, maybe. Like, I haven't reviewed a movie in almost a year. Like, aside from, you know, The Lion King and the rest of the marathon that I have to work with. By the way, the, uh, the sequel review, it's finished and it's up on YouTube, but it's dealt with a copyright claim that blocked worldwide and I've already disputed it. It's going to take a few days, so just give it some time. It'll be up. I meant to get it finished for uh, the 27th, because that day would mark 21 years since the sequel came out. But yeah, I, I admit I'm worried about my video getting copyright because, mm, you know, I'm not going to say it. Yeah. All right. Well, spoiler. all I could say is, is that if it's under fair use, just disputed it. I mean, I disputed it against Disney and Disney was just like, all right, you know, claim. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, claim removed. All right. Cool. Like, I, I will give thing. respect to Disney for that instead of, you know, you know, the other shit that I don't want to go off a tangent about. Um, let's see. 
I'm looking for other uh, questions out there. Let's see. Thoughts about Sonic Drive-In feeling selling fried or fried Oreos? <laughs> Why oh, fried Oreos? Yeah, the fast food uh, franchise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the- Sonic is apparently selling fried Oreos now with in- some sort of combo meal. It, I mean, it, uh, I've heard worse. I mean, I, I mean, Christy and I have tried things at Burger King and the bizarre products they've made. So you can like. I mean, wa- I'm pro- Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say I'm probably going to get attacked by the Sonic community, but I don't give a shit about Sonic. I don't like it. <laughs> Look, yes. <laughs> you don't like from it. You don't like Sonic? Blasphemer! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, so I next one. Know. Have you played Rainbow Six Siege? I don't even know what that is. I know what it is. Don't play it. You're going to be very upset. Okay. What was the game? Um, Rainbow Six Siege. Oh, yeah, that whole thing. Okay, I did play uh, Rainbow Six Vegas, but I haven't played Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, Ask all, Luna Eclipse or Scare Master? Oh, that's a tough one. A tough one for me. Oh, man. Uh, Which one was Scare Luna Master Eclipse. again? What happens in that whole Scare bubble? Master? That was the one where Fluttershy scares the main six. Or yeah. The main five, I should say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the rest of them, and giving, you know, Nightmare Night a chance. And Luna Eclipse like was Luna. the first episode where Luna makes the appearance. What, did you, what was that, Bliss? Yeah. I like Luna Eclipsed. Okay. I think I'm going to go with Luna Eclipsed as well. Yeah. Riley? I, personally, I like I like Scare Master, honestly. Okay, that's fair. Because Scare Master does have a very important message that, you know, you give something a try, and while you understand the appeal, sometimes it isn't your cup of tea. And I think that's one of the most realistic type of messages that some people will have, you know, that should <laughs> learn about. And when it comes mm-hmm. to other media, there's always, you know... Oh, give something a chance and you might like it. And in the end, they actually, you know, like it. But no, in this situation, they actually, you know, go to the extra mile saying, I get the appeal, but this just isn't for me. That is a beautiful message that people should learn about. So you have a great message there, whereas Luna Eclipse is a lot more comedically driven. And I just love, you know, the shouting voices and the many memes that it spawns. So yeah, the Canterlot voice. Yeah, and all that. yeah that, that shit's still funny. <laughs> Ha, huzzah! How many points do I receive? The fun has been doubled. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's still like it, it's. I still think that episode still holds up. And also, I did not take issue with Pinky in that episode. No, I didn't yeah. either. She was just playing the role, and she explained her role. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh yeah, I get that's the idea, but it still rubbed me the wrong way. Well, maybe that's the idea because. It's what hap- It's you know. It's part of embracing a holiday. It's a bit of a challenge that you know Luna had to face, and beneficially, she is the one who helped give out the hint to Luna and Twilight. So yeah, um, for my pick, uh, fuck. If I say Luna Eclipse, people are gonna say it's because I like Luna a lot. But I love Scare Master <laughs> because I love the message it was going for. Like, I'm not as big of Halloween as I was before, but I still have a respect for it. I mean, what did you think we were talking about in this podcast? So, I'm really at a 50-50. Join the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> the dark side of the moon! Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Ellie's saying something in the chat, guys. Uh, what is Ellie saying? Sonic, gotta go fast. Away from this place. <laughs> no, 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 the next Amen. one she says... Right, Sweet. y'all don't face horror movies on me, right? Oh my god. <laughs> Glares about alien movies. <laughs> <laughs> what? Did you, did you force Ellie to watch the alien movies? I want no. She she's not seen any of the alien. Films. Oh yeah, that's I right. She never seen so- any of the alien movies. She hasn't watched T two. That killed no, me. No, I remember. That, that sent me to my grave. <laughs> I mean, I lost my I, I lost my shit when I found out that she never saw T2. She's like, I meant the first one. Watch T2. Come on. <laughs> fucking Robert Patrick is the goddamn T1000 that I'm not going to give any spoiling material, but you, that's a movie you want. That's one of those movies. What to, we'll talk shit. Yeah, no. You, that's one of those movies you have to see before you die. Yeah, you have I to agree. See it before you die. <laughs> Honestly, you after two, you can just stop watching the watching series. T2? You want to hear why my mom likes watching T two? Why? Uh, what was the actor at the T one thousand again? Robert Patrick. Yeah, Robert Patrick. Oh, she likes to watch him run from behind. If you get much my drift. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
I mean, who'd have thought that the T one squats? I see. Who'd have thought that the T one thousand would have a nice ass? Oh, great. Hey, yeah. Okay, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> we apologize oh, for we, we we apologize for you know somebody interfering in the podcast. How are you doing, Ellie? You know, you brought this on yourselves. I was being respectful <laughs> about the fact you were having a fucking podcast. You brought up the like, fucking no, subject. Go- no, no, I don't want to hear that shit. You're not making me watch the goddamn movie. <laughs> I don't fucking care. Cat hasn't seen T two. Hey babe, I haven't seen T two. Hey babe, I haven't seen T two, and I don't want to. All right, well you guys. Okay, okay. I'll watch I'll get it. The he said okay, and I don't, and he's not gonna make me watch it. So traitor! Fuck you. <laughs> You're in trail. Betrayed me, and you are a sad lady if you don't see that movie. That's all I'm gonna say. Sad lady. Chris just said to me that he's of the opinion none of the Terminator movies make sense. Well, well, well you know what? No, 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 no. Hold up, hold up. The later installments became utter shit. Yeah. Somebody yeah. hold me back. Bless, I'm holding you back right now. Yeah, just no, just yeah. watch T2, and that's it. T3. Yeah. I don't want to watch any of them. Why? Because it's not my thing. Why? <laughs> because I am much more of a fantasy nerd. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> what kind of Makes fantasy horror films that's are there? Remember, ladies and gentlemen, one of Fox's favorite episodes talks about how you try something it's not your thing, and people don't force it down your throat. Well, you didn't try T two yet. <laughs> I tried T1. I watched the first Terminator and it wasn't my thing. If she didn't like the first one. I told y'all that. Okay, okay. In all seriousness, if she did watch the first one, because I forgot you said that, my bad. I, if she said she watched it and she's not really into the sci fi genre, then that's fair. Mm. Oh, it makes me die a little inside, but it's okay. <laughs> Jeez, I just glossed over a shit ton of other questions. I'm trying to figure out which ones are which. I'll b- I'll bounce back out. Cause I just needed to say this because y'all are motherfuckers. I love you, Ellie. <laughs> we love you, Ellie. Love you, Ellie. These are lies, you, and Ellie. I feel betrayed. Good night, <laughs> Ellie. Give it her. Give her a round of applause for randomly appearing into our podcast. <laughs> Golf clap. All right, so, um, shit, let me, I gotta find a question here. Uh, what's yeah, your favorite horror, fo- uh, horror book? I have not read any of the horror books of any horror sort. Book. I'm not a big well, book I mean, person. I mean, does Alien vs. Predator count? Oh, what about the scary, book. what about the Scary Stories 3 book? Does that count? Scary Stories I think Stories I had 3? that book as a, as a child. It's a middle school, high school book that basically is a collection of scary stories in one book. Ooh, I think I had that. I'll go with that. Yeah. I know it's kind of <laughs> cheating, but... <laughs> Wait, really? did the cover of the book had, like, this huge head with a pipe yes. coming... All right, yes. yeah, we had the same book. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. All right, so... so um, I'm trying to see if I can look for any other... Uh, questions. By the way, Wheel of Steel, I'm not clicking on that link because that means it, I would... it's what is it's it? Safe. It's safe. Well, it's not that... no, 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 no. It's not. It's not that it's safe. It's that I would have to present it on the screen. Yeah. Oh. It's... Well, it's yeah. NLP related. Well, yeah. No, guys. Yeah. Don't don't ask me about reactions to certain pictures that are in that chat over there because people who watch it on YouTube uh, are not going to be able to understand it, and I'm not going to go to the trouble of presenting it on the screen. Yeah, no. ask us a question that doesn't involve us looking at things. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Ask all. Have you seen or heard of Jendi Tarkawas? What? How the fuck do you see that? I haven't even Gen-D heard of that Tartikovsky. fucking language that you just tried to emulate. Hold on, Riley knew what it was. Gendi Tartakovsky. He's the guy who created uh, Samurai Jack, Dexter's Laboratory, the whole Oh, of okay. Mm. Uh, uh, and recently, Primal. I'm pretty sure that all the Samurai Jack fans are going to get pissed at me for mispronouncing his name. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't, no, don't kick yourself because I could have pronounced it if my life depended on it, but I do love his work. Jack, oh, yeah. Samurai Jack, oh, and yeah. Primal. Holy crap with Primal. Wow. Ooh, that first episode. I know. Yeah. I pre- oh. 
So I um, still haven't seen the last season of Samurai Jack, but I need to. You should. I, I had to you watch should. most of the series. Like I know the premise of it. I just haven't watched too much of it. Um, Retro Gamer Kevin, what uh, what favorite video game from your childhood would you stream one day? To answer that question, I already did. It was called Super Metroid. And the other one was Mega Man X. And the first uh-huh. game that I streamed was Super Mario World. And that was more of a legit game in my childhood. I loved watching my brother play Mega Man X. Super Metroid became my favorite game of all time. Mega Man. Mega fighting Man. robot. Super fighting Mega robot. Man. Mega Man. Mega Man. <laughs> So my favorite game from my childhood was Donkey Kong Country, and I streamed that a couple of times. So Oh, that yeah. game is so much fun. Like, I remember when Bliss and I, well, like, I was streaming the game, and she watched me play uh, that one stage where you had to flick the switch and keep it on, be- or keep it, um, yeah, it has to be green, because it otherwise turns red. No, the stop and go! Yeah. That yeah. one was, that was an but, intense... But she- yeah, no, that was an intense stage, and I managed to get through it in one sitting during that stream. That was a I miracle. Know, I you. And it was so epic. <laughs> <laughs> like literally in one of the highlight reels when I actually had that scene in there, I used that uh, the Hall of the Mountain King where the music got more intense. That's what it felt like. It was um, like, oh god, it's happening. We're gonna die. <laughs> Die. It was amazing. <laughs> I am already streaming Super Star Wars. Oh, good luck with that, dude. Oh my god. May the force be with you. Oh, literally, like that the game <laughs> series, they're fun to play. They can be beatable. Oh, it will kick your ass really hard. Those games are ridiculously difficult. Mm. Mm. Alright, um, I'm spacing out, so apologies for my mind being crap today, but are you ever gonna play Shovel Knight? I still have plans on streaming Shovel Knight. I, I think I'm having that as a milestone goal for a new powerhouse computer. Uh, oh, next, hell yeah. Yeah, so, uh, next question. Have you played Call of Duty Zombies? No, I have not. I've not played any of the Call of Duty games. I probably don't have any interest in playing them. At some point, yeah, I, I may see. have to. I don't, I see I don't think see. you would like them. I've, I've already heard, like, it's got a pretty big following. Oh, Blizz, you have a question. Are there any puzzle games Goldie hasn't played yet that makes you... Re- really, Wheel of Steel? I think I've played enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see. We haven't played Prance against each other yet. Prance? Somebody explain what Prance is to me. What the fuck? <laughs> Whoa, Bliss, even I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> Bliss, get a glass of water and chill. No. Okay, chat, explain to me what Prance is. No, no, Bliss I'm, is not gonna both, do it. I'm gonna grab both of you idiots by the ears, gonna make you go to Dr. Wolf's channel, look up the game, type in Prance, and watch one of his videos. Be right. educated. Okay, link me the video and then I'll have it linked in the description box and I'll take a look oh, at it after. Th- basket eating bulldog. I gotta, make, <laughs> gotta do everything around here. Well, looks like we've got the OCD Bliss back. Holy crap. Jesus Christ! <laughs> How do you not know it? Because okay, wh- like it, wh- it'll probably ring a bell when I find out what it is. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Christ. Um. Anyways, uh, there is one game that I still have yet to. Um. You know, I could set that as a milestone. Oh, for the Virtual Boy, Tetris 3D. Mm, okay. <sighs> so angry right now <laughs> Jesus. i'm just beyond angry all right post it in the stream chat you you, you butthead there you go <laughs> <laughs> oh it's a card game isn't it yes, yeah it's a card okay game. okay bliss that's why i don't know what it is i don't play card games it's literally got silver quill dog eliora firebrand and laggy bliss in the deck well it, that's the youtube expansion but still <laughs> Wait, you don't like card games, so that means you don't like, like, Uno and stuff like that? Well, 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 I said I don't play that much card games. I don't play that much card games. There's very few board games that I played. There have been some that I remember playing, but had a bit of a bitter experience because of losing so much. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can call it salty there. But I do love playing Uno. Something about Uno is always fun to play, but I will never forget the time when you and I were stuck in that one round of Uno for three hours. 
Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh yeah, no. Um, they have Uno on Steam. Me, Wolfhead, Logic, and I think Lux was there. We were, yeah, it was all four of us, and we were playing a round that literally went on for hours. Yeah. Oh. Damn. By the way, I think I Logic say, just let you win at the end, and that's how we escaped from so, that peril. No, like, I, by the way, Golden, go Golden, yeah, that link I gave you to learn the game Prance, that video is the same video that started the war between me and Silver Quill. Okay, <laughs> then. The no. incident is in that video. The incident where he shifts me with Flash Sentry is in that video. Okay, <laughs> so that's why you lost your marbles. Okay. Bliss, bliss, breathe. <laughs> Riley, can you do the go goofy I'm gonna kill you thing? <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Where's my money, Damien? <laughs> <sighs> my voice is shot. I'm so mad. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, what would you do if they add Twilight Sparkle to Super Smash Brothers? Oh my! They're not going to. First of all, what? second, what kind of moves is Twilight gonna have? Use your imagination, guys. I mean, we already have them's fighting herds, which is basically Twilight. Yeah, it's it's like it's like it's like uh, what was that game supposed to be called originally? Fighting is magic. Yeah. yeah. Fighting his magic, and then they just like took the skins off and put some different skins on them, and were like, "Hey, look, they, these are some original characters." Yeah. Now. Well, actually, they were drawn by Lauren Faust for the for the game to use. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what it came down to. So yeah, yeah that's what that turned into. Um, ask all, what are your thoughts on Friendship is Magic getting a tenth season in the comics? Who wants to go first? Don't, don't know. Don't care. Uh, I it, it, comics have always been like sometimes it's canon, sometimes it's not. I. I, I don't really. I'm gonna be the only person in this group that's actually gonna read them and enjoy myself. Okay then. You I know do Golden that. doesn't give a you shit. You do that. If I don't know. Don't, don't care. Yeah. If there's like a collection at a convention or something, yeah, I might pick that up or it's something. Like the one thing me and Golden do agree on. Don't know. Don't care. <laughs> no, it's not so much as a don't know. Don't care. Um, I've, I'm, I'm holding myself back from going on a like another stupid rant, like. The person who may have asked me about the comics probably did not know about it, but I take issue when it comes to what the MLP comics are. Like, I'm not saying the comics are bad. I just didn't like how it was treated by the fans saying, oh, they explain this in the comics, they explain that in the comics, which implies, oh, you have to read the comics to know the show more when the show really well, should stand on its own. And that that's I took so weird. a major Well, the issue thing about with. the comics is sometimes it's canon and sometimes it's not. So I, it, did, it's, it's, I did pick up on that. And afterwards, yeah. I was able to, like, relieve my shoulders saying, oh, thank God, I don't have to worry about that anymore. But with the 10th season, they're probably using it to cover things that I would have loved to have seen in the show. And if that's the case, it just draws back to the root of how the whole situation started. <sighs> for I, me, it's Karen, just... Which one is it, well, for me, it's the same thing as Golden, on top of the fact that I don't like the idea that I have to spend money to watch a series. Exactly. A series. Hmm. Ellie, yeah. I can already read your text right there. It didn't take until years until I would get the answer of when, uh, whether or not they're canon. So it's pretty much a mental bolt into my head. It's just a simple fact that nobody should have to read an external material to understand its roots. Yeah, that's I don't like that. Yeah. Also, I, really I want to mention I want to mention to Miles the Wolf. I know you were not trying to be a dick. You didn't know about this. This is just something that I have an issue with. So don't beat yourself up over it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. First off, guys, don't don't be mean to each other. Don't call each other names. Secondly, yeah. yeah uh, don't the the whole shipping with Blast Century joke that was what two years ago and it literally killed off by Silverquill himself. Because I was getting harassed for it, so yeah. Um, so yeah, so please don't uh, do that anymore, please. And again, guys, don't call each other names. Not cool. Even and, if your, yeah. even if your uh, motives are were it, with good intent, don't 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 name call. Don't Keep call each civil. other dicks. Thank you. Moving on. Okay, here's a funny question. Don't hate me for this. I'm ashamed. What would you do if they added My Little Pony to Fortnite? Um, 
what they have to what? get rights from Hasbro if they were to do that? That's exactly how that would happen. Yeah, they would have to get rights from Hasbro, and then fucking Twilight jumps out of a bus and she's flying down with her wings and she picks up a shotgun and shoots somebody in the face. I don't That's know exactly. much about Fortnite. All I know is that it's an easy target for me to like make jokes about. I hear it's a garbage game. <laughs> no, it's a fun game. It's just the fan base. Like, it's a lot of little kids and shit, so... Yeah. The game is fun. The fan base is garbage, basically. It's it's yeah. it's kind of the same thing with Roblox. Yeah. Never played it. Let's just say that it's the one that invented the oof sound. The oof! Oh, I know, where, I know where the oof came from. I know it came from Roblox. I just never played the game. You know, <laughs> like, quick little thing. Is it wrong to say that I thought it was a kid saying boom? Saying boom! Instead of <laughs> oof! <laughs> because I heard a B in there. I I could have sworn I heard a B sound in there. Okay. You know, it's going to be interesting in the future to explain to future generations these memes and where they came from. I'm just just a thought that came to my head all of a sudden. I think I'm subscribed <laughs> to a channel that looks into the history of memes. I haven't <laughs> uploaded anything in a while. I wonder. Well, you yeah, see, your grandpappy used to say, "Oh dear God." Long. Okay. Yeah. So next question. <laughs> Uh, the Rise of Skywalker trailer, yay or nay? I'm all for it. I'm going to keep myself open-minded to watch the last of the Disney trilogy. Oh, yeah. I want to see what, it, what it, how it pans out, honestly. Not yeah. getting my hopes up. That's all I'm like, going to say. Not not I'm going to keep my, my expectations up. low because like, I already know it's bad reputation and you know the shitstorm that happened ever since Disney got Lucasfilms. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, next one. Have any of you have a Switch and have a NES or uh, SNES extension? What is your favorite retro game? Retro uh, game. Once uh, again, Donkey Kong Country. Yeah. I, do they make a fucking ex uh, SNES extension for the Switch? I don't know if they do. I, I think don't he know means either. like the online pass that comes with like a bunch of retro games. That I, they, yeah. Oh, they do. It's a, it's the SNES, yeah. yeah. Not, not a SNES, I, but the NES. Well they, well, they have the NES games, and they're, like, trickling out some SNES games, but oh. it's just, like, really slow going. Yeah. I don't have a Switch. I have We have a Retron. Oh, I don't yeah, have a Switch thing. either, so... Um, Let's see. Let's let's narrow down to about three questions left, and let's do this on a lightning round. Got a little question. What is uh, your opinion on Borderlands? I have not played Borderlands. What would you I do have, and I fucking love it. Love what it. would you do if you get sent to Equestria? I don't fucking know. Uh, I mean, in my videos, I've been having as much fun. <laughs> See how fast you can run. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's an interesting one. Thoughts on the possibility of John Cena getting the role of playing as Duke Nukem for a Duke Nukem movie? That, um, is, that sounds hilarious, he, actually. I mean, if there, part, I, mean, when I you, just don't know about his voice. Well, okay, when you think about it, if you're going to make a movie like Duke Nukem, it's going to be stupid fun. Like, that's all what the material is going to be. I think that's a simple enough premise to try to work with don't try to screw it up like what happened with doom doom was a simple you know straightforward action movie uh action game the movie screwed up so much oh even the rock regrets that film yeah <laughs> like he said basically on twitter and like warner brothers was like Dwayne, we need to talk <laughs> <laughs> um Mega amazing. Have you played Star Fox on the SNES? Yes, I have. I've actually streamed it, and it's the birth of when a certain Skittlecorn jumped in the call and scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I haven't played I haven't played the one on SNES, but I played the one on N64 and I Oh fuck yeah. Like Star Fox 64 was the shit. It still is the shit. It still I is. Like that's a game I'll game. definitely go back to. I'm just yeah. not big into flying games, honestly. No, that's fair enough. Um, a lot, not a lot of people like uh, flight simulators. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Dick kick him. Oh god. <laughs> oh what what what? No, dick kick him. It's okay. It's not a meme, but it is a joke that Solar actually quoted. Um, <laughs> it's a guy I'm here to kick gum and chew ass. <laughs> and oh, a whole lot of ass. Oh. The dude was dick laughing his him. ass off while reading it. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Um, okay, uh, here's the final question from Eliora. Ask all, would any of you play Code Vein? I don't know what that is. I would. That It's um, basically I'm... a Souls-like game that just recently came out with a lot of anime influence and a really good customization. I, I'm definitely interested in it. I know what it is. I'm not interested. I did buy Logic a copy of it, though. 
So you might want to play with him. Derek, to answer you about that quote, that's based off of a joke somebody made. They got it switched around. <laughs> that's what that whole yeah. thing is for a dick kick em. Um. Anyways, I, I, I think that's the last of the Q&A. I think it's time mm. to wrap things up. This was this is probably the longest podcast that I've had so far. Yeah. And we've had quite a <laughs> lot to talk about. Um, I do hope that in the future we do have some fun conversations like this. Because the first batch, it was a little awkward to, you know, try to work with. But now, I, I hopefully so far, if we know what to prepare for and what to talk about, um, we can definitely have a fun time, you know, joke around oh, yeah, and talk about anything. Because that's what makes podcasts fun. You know, it's something to listen to <laughs> when you're working on something. You know, it's it's that kind of thing. So yeah, yep. yeah. Um, <sighs> with that being said, um, I uh, thank you guys for watching on Twitch. If you've seen it on YouTube, uh, stay tuned for at some point as I link. Yeah, actually, in the description box, I'll have the post show linked in there on my second channel, and you can subscribe there for any archives of Golden Fox plays and anything else, whether it's editing streams or what have you. So, with that being said and done. Uh, thank you for watching. I will now go to post show.